areas you started to see, oh, wait, there's some real indifferences that we have. And one of the things that I consistently see is it's always this kicking down at the efforts of us who are legacy Americans, right? And and even to the statement about uh, uh, slavery and what's happening in the South, as a New Yorker, we know the industry of New York as one of the 13 colonies when it was New Amsterdam, New Netherlands, right? We know that the, the, the amount of insurances that went on in the cotton, you know, history or the, the, the fact that the cotton processing was happening in New York. We know about Seneca Village, the green, which is Jamaica, uh, uh, Jackson Heights uh, uh, in Queens, which historic black communities, Rosedale, like literally across New York is some of the earliest, oldest black settlements because slavery happened here and people were freed here early. And we could go through those communities right now, Flip, and you can see the gentrified. We could see eminent, do eminent domain policies. We could see housing discrimination and so many things that have removed the black presence in New York City, or in, I would say specifically in New York City, then we could not say, okay, we aren't deserving of reparations. So when I see a bill pass, I'm like, all right, let's make sure that this shit is what it needs to be for us, because we are the ones who have always been at the helm of fighting for stuff, right? Mm -hmm. When when that shit happened, and in, in, I mean, and and I'm gonna land here. Anytime there's issues around the the fight for unity in America, specifically in New York, bro, Black Americans fight for everybody, bro. We the ones that step up and make sure that we stand with our Caribbean brothers, our stand with our African brothers. We do historically under the guise of blackness. When a, when it's when a Caribbean kid gets shot, we ain't oh no, that ain't that ain't one of our kids. Even the Hispanic kids, we go outside for everybody. But the moment True. we put our interests first and say, yo, we need repair because we have never been repaired, we always find ourselves being kicked down at or kicked our backs kicked in by our folks that say that they for us and then it's I right, wait let me fall back and do some research what I would love for you to do the research and then use your platform to echo the support behind us right and not it got to be in a retracted statement or let me clarify you but yo I really care about this fight my people are having and or or or, or people that look like me I have been having even if we delineate and specifically because we're black Americans and you're black Caribbean but we still are fighting for the repair of our people I would love it for people that get on platforms of make it out the mud like you do with the you know with the skits and stuff with your podcast and bro we see y'all come up I'm from the city I would love to be able to, I right, damn, that nigga flipped there. He did his thing with the podcast now, and he's still making sure that he speaks for his brothers and sisters from the from from New York City that's standing on reparations or the fact that we deserve reparations and it's okay for us to fight for it, right? If it's, uh, uh, wait, pay attention to the political ops and how this shit is being weaponized, that's a whole nother conversation, but at least show support and solidarity that you with us and then have a conversation about ways in which we can mechanize ourselves around the system. But many of us been doing this work, so we know a lot of that, and we just want to see our, our Caribbean brothers and, and, and sisters speak for us and not every time it's against us, and we got to do, and, and, and it got to be rooms like this. All right, let me so, get up. Sorry. I want to respond to this gentleman, if y'all mind. Um, I, I, do, I do understand, I do respect what you said. Um, the problem is, though, is that, you know, like I said, I was ignorant to a lot of the, the first of all, Caribbean, I don't even know what you said. I don't know, I don't even know what that is. I never heard of that before. I never. So I can tell you, I never heard of that. I don't, I don't even know what that is. So I'm going to do my research when I get off of here and see what that is. Secondly, I wasn't, like I told you earlier, like I said earlier in the, in the spaces, I wasn't raised where there was a difference. I found that out as an adult. I can honestly say that. What call me ignorant, call my family, shielded me from it, call the neighborhood that I grew up in where we were more in tune with each other when it came to that. I didn't grow up like that. I'm 36 years old. I'll be 37 this year. I did not know any difference. It was all family in Brooklyn. That's what I knew. So, I, but I understand and I can't take away from anything that you went through or anybody went through. So, and then the, the only last question I have is that do you do you i don't want to come off crazy hmm. do you feel like black people ancestors and this is i just want to ask, I ask bread man this question 
before when we had the back and forth and he didn't answer it. So hopefully one of you guys can answer it. Where did your ancestors come from? I don't know if that's a question that's asked a lot, but w were they Native Americans? I thought the Native, you know, like, unless you could educate me a little more, sh guide me to the place where I can research. Where did your ancestors come from? And if they did come from Africa, do you negate that lineage? Is that no longer a, 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 a thing? Say if you, you say, your ancestors was brought here like 500 years ago, 400 years ago, right? Are you no longer considering yourself African because your forefathers fought in the war and stuff like that? Do you, do you let go of that part of your life if that's the case? Or were your whole, is your whole <laughs> lineage from here? Is milk and chocolate milk the same thing? I don't know what that means. If I could, let me let me try to answer that in a way that I understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me, can I answer? On. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. We don't need nobody from New York to answer this question. We need a Southern Black American. Seventy percent of Black Americans in the South. So let me answer this question for you. But you know, I'm my family from the South too. I don't. Like, well, let, yeah, Hudson, let's, 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 hold on, let's hold on, fall back for a second. Fall back for a second. Hold on, hold on, Hudson, hold, hold on. Let 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 New Negro respond, bro, because he they is from New York, and I think that. New Negro got a perspective that we all got the same sentiments in this space. So let him just let him respond. I'm gonna get to you, bro. Yeah. So so how we understand it that is that it's quote black people in America before the Europeans and it's people who were shipped over here as victims of the transatlantic slave trade. So what we do is what we've ironed out is not getting into the origin banging of where we came from because we all went through chattel slavery right and within that process of 400 to 500 years we understand that for those of us who understand that we have portions that come from africa and those who stand on that their people came from the americas we are still victims of american chattel slavery and we are american so we put we are american first some say that they're aboriginal and they stand on the indigenous american side and some people say that we're from african descent but the common framework that we understand is that we are victims of U.S. chattel slavery. We are all those who were freed by emancipation or freed beforehand, and we are all the individuals that are deserving of reparations. And that could be people, you know, so that that's really the cleanest way to say it, because anything other than that is origin banging of where Black comes from, and we, we've rectified that already. Thank you. Got you. Okay. Mark, Mark, Mark from the soil, you got it. What's going on, uh, cousin Sonny, brother Booby, uh, Queens Flip? Yeah, man, I wanted to get up here uh, and talk to Queens about uh, Queens Flip about yeah, we passionate to be a Black Americans, bro. Like, listen, my grandfather, uh, some of our great grandfathers, our uncles, uh, we supported the sixties with uh, Malcolm X, the Black Panther Party, Martin Luther King. We we was all flat black, man. We was really pushing flat black. We the one got a lot of Caribbeans, a lot of Africans, a lot of people from different part of the diaspora to come over here. You know what I'm saying? We was pushing hard. It was the point when we woke up and understood that they didn't have the same, they was siding with crackers on a lot of parts. Like when they come over, like if you ever notice, they'll get with crackers, they'll, they'll put, try to push us down to the bottom of the totem pole. Black Americans, bro, like push us down to the bottom of the totem pole and step on this, bro. We was pushing and bringing out like when people was leaving their countries to come over here to say safe landing. Like we was like, come on, brother, we you welcome. Come on over, man. So if that's what's happening to you in your country or wherever you at, we was having a safe haven for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? You come over here to so-called melting pot or where we established as a black Americans. And we was we was been fighting these crackers, man, all our life. That's my whole thing. We've been fighting them. But when we come over and we get these other, these immigrants and things of that nature siding with the crackers when we trying to go directly at the problem, which is racism and shit that we've been going through, they use them as the buffer. You know, they come in, get in the way, you know, um, and, and stepping in the way of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we are together with black Americans, bro. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a... Is anybody saying anything? Cause I can't hear. Yeah, Is it me? yeah, no, I don't know. You, it's probably yeah, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. He talking. He'll drop down. And I'll get you back up. 
Yeah, so anyway, I don't want nobody to be offended that we standing on black American business. Like, it's not separation. I know, like, you're only 37, and like I say, you, you probably grew up, you missed this kind of conversation where people was understanding from the 60s and your great-grandfather and things of that nature, or, I mean, people's great-grandfathers and the households that you said you were friends with black Americans and things that you call a mom and things of that. They understand the story. Like, it's just that, that kids, when you're raising kids, you know, we don't look at it like that. We just like, we kids, we out there playing in the park. We doing this, we doing it, playing basketball and things of that nature. But if you really break it down, if somebody ever sat down with you and broke the whole aspect of everything about the lineage, see, we do our lineage, bro. Like, see, and that's how we come up with, you know, that's how I come up with, I'm from the soil. Like, I did my lineage, like, bro. Like, that's what uh, Talent, brother Talent, which is New Negro, actually gave you, um, exactly what's you know what we've been you know standing on like you know some some of us been coming from the dots who come on slave ship and some of them was indigenous and some people that and we mixed and we was just a part of the whole the whole uh equation right so i just want you to understand that you still got like you deserve reparations from caricom like you're gonna do that like they'll put something up in the jumbotron before you go and you'll be able to just take the link and be able to go and see where you know where you can reside for your reparations that you looking for and things that problems that where you help your people because i know you help your people back you know the caribbeans you send them you know different things i, and I know you do i know you do you take the resources that you got from america and then you go and take care of your business i understand that it's, well, it's, i was born here hold on i was born here but I, yeah i got you you're right yes yeah, yeah yeah i'm just saying i know you was born here but i'm just saying your lineage goes let me back. ask you a question real quick let me ask you a question real quick my brother i'm sorry because what's your name again i'm gonna i'm gonna know your name my name is Mark. Mark, from Mark let me ask you a question. Marcus Garvey, where do you guys put him? He was Jamaican, came out here, and had a lot of black people, black Americans marching with him and believing in his movement. Even though that ship shit he did was bullshit, he still, he still moved the needle. Now, where do you guys put him as far as in your history or the impact he Trash. had? May I speak on that real quick? Garvey's an immigrant, though. You know, he's an immigrant, yes. though. That, May I speak historically? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna ask this gentleman. He is an immigrant, but does that negate the, what he what what he has done for black people? He Do has you, done nothing for black Americans. He did absolutely nothing. For money. He did nothing for black so, Americans. May I just absolutely speak nothing? Briefly? Okay, Sonny? okay. I, I, I'm gonna Sonny. research that. I, well, let me let me let me explain that. to you how he did absolutely nothing. Um, he uh he gave about the equivalent of seventeen million dollars from black Americans for his Back to Africa movement. Yeah. Um, and he initially, when he came to America, he uh, gained control over a movement that was happening prior to his arrival, which was by a woman named Callie House. Uh, she was doing uh, a rep, the first reparations movement. Okay, you ever heard of her? No, I'm about to look up now. What's her name? Callie House. Callie House. C A L L I E. House. Okay. Uh, she was a part of the first reparations movement. Um, she was arrested illegally by the uh, United States government and um, and jailed um, because of her 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 advocacy. Um, then Marcus Garvey came with his uh, pan black ideology and um, his pan African movement, okay. and he galvanized the energy that she had created around the reparations movement for a pan African movement or a back to Africa movement. And Got that, uh, and he gained the equivalent of seventeen million dollars, uh, because of that advocacy. And then he was arrested and then deported. He is the deported. first Caribbean to be deported from the United States. I'm aware of that. Yes, but I, so, so, so well, now. Can I just jump in? There's a couple of points that need to be clarified. There was a whole movement by the civil rights leaders of that time called Marcus Garvey Must Go, because they recognized early on that he was a sellout and he was a, um, a scammer. And he has what's called the United Negro Papers, I'm leaving UNIA Papers, where he was siding with whites, white races behind our backs, when you can read this for yourself, where he said, the Negroes are lazy, good for nothing slumberers. And he was- Sound familiar? Yes, and he was taking money, just like we see the sellouts doing in 2024, to better himself. So mm. a lot of times, like people like you, no disrespect, will try to throw out one or two people in American history that come from the Caribbean or the African to highlight them when we have 
thousands, hundreds, millions of people who've been fighting and to try to throw out one person as if they're gonna change the trajectory of black American freedom and history is, is really not the way to go. And, and talking to us, I'm gonna close on this, talking to us, you should be able to pick up, we don't have a lot of time to speak. We are very learned people about our history. And that's why we're in the position to educate you. So thank you. Ask us about Shirley Chisholm. You there, Flip? I can't I'm, hear. I, I heard. I, I mean, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I understand. I heard what you said. I'm gonna do my research as well. And you know, I, somebody gave me the name Callie House. I'm, I'm gonna look who this beautiful lady is and understand. I'm, I'm down to learn. I'm down to learn. I just know some of the, a lot of the. Uh, from what I learned, and I, you know, like I said, Malcolm X, his family were Garveyites, and a lot of people followed Marcus Garvey. So I didn't. I heard about the whole thing with the government where they deported him, but I didn't know black people. I, I just said, I'm ignorant to this shit. So I'm listening and I'm understanding and I'm, I'm going to do my research. All you gotta do is send me links or post it on my page. I'll go, I, I'll go research it so I can, I can know what I'm talking about. Definitely, That's, definitely. I, I, you know, and like, I, you know, I appreciate you for pulling up, man, because a lot of people, you know, they, they, they may not have the, the, the fortitude to step into this space, man. You know what I'm saying? So that was dope that you put up in the space, bro. And, and it was dope that you put out the, the video once you did get the information and the knowledge and you, you know, you came back and, you know, you kind of corrected it, bro. Cause it, it is people who will, you know, um, uh, people that, that are not of the lineage that, that they won't do that. They stand on a square. Like, you know, the, uh, the one, the one, you know, the lady in, uh, the governor of Virginia, I forgot, uh, Winsome Sears, right? She's, she, she's Jamaican, right? But she's the governor, uh, the, you know, Lieutenant governor of Virginia, but she said the black Americans need to get over slavery, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it, it is like little nuances where people who are not black American who do have, you know, high positions or seats of authority, they do kind of, you know, push back, you know what I mean? On what black Americans is trying to do. And all we trying to do is just stand on our square and represent our culture and, and push forward towards reparations. They had the other dude, the Nigerian dude up there in Michigan, he, he was running too. I, I, Austin Ching, Austin Chingy, right? Cool. Yeah, he he said that once he got into office, one of the things he was going to do was get rid of Black History Month. And he he's not even historically tied to Black History Month. He a whole Nigerian coming over here saying that, you know, he want to get rid of Black History Month. So, you know, it, it is like a lot of nuances in the conversation, man. I, I, I know you was asking the question. I was just going to let people unpack it. You know, um, and you know, had a conversation for you because it's a lot of people that you know kind of want to speak to you, man. So I, I, I do want to keep like a two minute time limit because I know I you. Do that. I do that. I do that. Do that. But I, I, know, I know. I know you busy. I, 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 yeah. I, you know, I, I'm busy too, man. I actually, I was, I was going to close the space down like I around. Gotta film, real quick, I got, I got to film a podcast in a little bit. I got about like uh, five to ten more minutes. Um, but so, Sonny, can I take my turn real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Two, you got two, go ahead. Do um, if y'all can't do a minute, minute and a half, that way I can get the, all the hands on the stage. Well, I've been waiting a minute, but real quick, and before I start, I just want to say one more thing about Marcus Garvey. That green, black, and red flag has nothing to do with true Pan Africanism. The green is for the Irish, and that's why you saw him wearing that kilt. So remember that. But um, Queens, thank you for uh, coming to Sunny and Booby's stage. Greatly appreciate it. So one thing I want you to, you know, leave with is to understand that Black American freedmen have been on the soil since before the Europeans got here. So we are here, we've been fighting a long game. We, we are fighting it now and we always have been. And <clears throat> that's why the U.S. is the safest and most prosperous haven for melanated people everywhere in the world. This is the only place that other melanated people can come to and prosper not be slapped around, killed out in the open and, and disrespected. So someone told you that you have a right to your opinion, but moving forward, you know, given the fact that you said um, you're learning, well, we're asking people from outside of our culture, melanated immigrants, that means first, second, third generation. If you're going to speak about anything dealing with black American freedmen culture, because it is a great and beautiful and separate and distinct culture, identify your lineage. So when you're speaking to the universe, you're letting people know, I'm saying this as a Caribbean, or I'm saying this as an African, like let people know. And then you say, well, we're all black. So, you know, what I'm saying is we need you for people from outside the culture. If you say you're, we're all black, you gotta have the same code and sense of blackness that we do. 
You have to think like we do. That's how we've survived this long. And that code means you do not publicly get on any platform where whites, racist, haters, anyone can grab your voice or your image saying what we should and shouldn't have. Our code is we speak positive and uplifting for any movement that's gonna better black Americans. And by default, that means other people. I'm also asking you, um, think about what you said, even in this space, you, was, you were like, you know, uh, well, you know, just fuck all that. You know, I don't give a fuck about it. I mean, I don't mean it that way, but I don't give a fuck. Would you go to the Palestinians and say that to them and say, well, they just fucking around with you. They just playing with you. You, you, you ain't had freedom all this time. We're asking for you guys to have the same sensitivity that you have for the Jews, the Palestinians. Right now, the people in Burkina Faso are fighting France for their freedom. I would never sit up and say, you know, fuck them damn Africans. They've been paying post-colonial taxes for 14 years. They playing with them niggas. Like, be careful how you speak on other people in their culture. We are literally fighting for our survival right now. Then we have people like Luke Campbell, who's a Caribbean, who is demanding, he's doing video after video, demanding financial help for Haitians, but then he plays around and speaks disrespectfully when it comes to black Americans and our reparations. And that's what we're tired of. You, you're you saying you're new to it, but we've been living this disrespect. We would never speak on any other melanated immigrant group and tell them they don't deserve X, they don't deserve Y, their government is fucking with them. What we do tell them is stand up and fight and we're with you. That's what a sense of blackness Hold means. on, hold on. Can I, can I, let me just well, Let me just wrap up and then man, please, oh, please, man. Please, give, me, mm. no, give me a second. You have when you teach somebody, you got to be mindful and quote them correctly. I didn't say that you didn't deserve anything. That's that's the only thing I want to make clear. I never said. I didn't the, say you said it. Okay. I said melanated people. I, well, I don't feel that you didn't deserve anything. I'm just saying, like, but, but, yeah, yeah, no. Like, what I do like is you're admitting, hey, I'm new to the conversation, I and that's you. why that's why I keep saying, please be mindful. Got you. And I'm trying yeah. to, yeah, and I'm trying to just, I don't have a lot of time. Respect. So I'm just trying, right. yeah. Respect. Okay. Okay. So I'm just trying to pepper it, you know, and give you some history real quick. So Got let you. me just wrap up. I'm almost done. So where we are in this battle, Sonny has made you aware. People like me, have me on the show, Sonny, Marcel. There's a bunch of people in the space. Mark from the soil. We are real advocates. We are out here writing legislation. Um, you know, stomping the streets, uh, just strategizing, lobbying, everything. But we're winning because many of the loud voices that you, you're not hearing from and in public spaces, we're winning, but then we can't have celebrities and politicians. Our politicians right now, the Congressional Black Caucus, are full of melanated immigrants. I don't mean this negatively, but like you, who don't know our history and who aren't fighting, who are afraid to stand up for black people. They're doing the same things they've done in their country, which is lay down just to get checks, just to get jobs. So there's a very nuanced conversation that people get very offended when we start um, addressing melanated immigrants, meaning Caribbeans and Africans speaking for us. We may not be ancestrally, we're, we're ancestrally connected, meaning we some of us are from um, descend from Africans. And some of us, you know, uh, claim Indian heritage, Native, I mean, not Native American, American Indian. But we have to be mindful. We are not historically or culturally connected. We're a different ethnic group. That's why you guys wave your Jamaican and your Haitian flag and Nigerians and Ethiopians rate, wave their flag. We should be able to wave our American flag and fight our fight on our soil the way that we have been doing for centuries. So we're just asking, Please, please be mindful, do the research. One of the suggested, a uh, quick way to really get up to speed, there's a quick uh, quick guide online by Dr. William Sandy Darity, who wrote From Here to Equality. And he has a reparations quick guide online and it's free, volumes one, two, and three. It will pose every question you could possibly think of asking about reparations and give you the answer. But just remember, you said, hey, I'm a 30, a 30-something, 36 year old guy and I'm just now learning. We're not just now learning because we're taught this from birth. And we have our history, our oral history, our written history. Someone mentioned Seneca Village. 
a lot of people don't know that Seneca Village is Central Park. That was a black community. We have red summers. We have the 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 massacres, land theft, uh, the devil's triangle. Like we can reel off our history like like it's nothing. But you can't because you don't come from our lived experience. But I'll close with that. Thank you so much for being patient and listening. Appreciate you. I'm going to follow you. Uh, Sunny, can I go next? Because I have to leave out. And I'll be right Yeah, go ahead, Hilda. Uh, how you doing, Flip? I'm also from um, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, you mentioned earlier or that you're familiar with um, uh, Governor Hochul had approved um, for the assembly to uh, do a study uh, for reparations. I don't really call it reparations because, you know, the state can actually uh, provide reparations or the, you know, fund us how we supposed to be funded or, you know, give us true reparations. So I would just say atonement. Um, so the assembly is already formed that position and already you know there's a difference of opinion from you know two groups one group you know of black people with the uh, pan-african mindset and another group of american freedmen on the grassroots who feels that uh, repair should go to uh who came from the people who was enslaved in the US and a uh, pan-african mindset Hilda, you Hilda, you kind of in the matrix so a little my bit. Question is, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better. Okay. Can you hear me, um, Flip? I can hear you. your phone was going in and out, but I can hear you. I heard the gist of it. What's going on? What's the question you have? Okay, the question I have, since there's two a difference of opinion between the African mindset group of people who feel all black people in New York City should get New York should get reparations. And then you have on the grassroots, the American freedmen who feel that the people who descend from US chattel slavery should get reparations. And already they're starting to argue and it looks like it can get real nasty. Um, I think it's unnecessary. Um, there is CARICOM for the Caribbeans, although CARICOM is excluding the Caribbeans that are here, living abroad outside of uh, the Caribbean but there is CARICOM. Um, I, do you agree or would you support reparations for um, um, descendants of U.S. chattel slavery in New York is what I want to ask you. Would I support reparations for what? Repair for the descendants of the descendants of U.S. chattel slavery, the people that descend from those who are enslaved in the U.S. Because right now, it looks like there's a difference of opinion and they're already starting to argue regarding that difference of opinion, regarding okay. who gets repair in New York. I su Yes, I would support that. I, I, I don't, if, if there's, uh, if I would support anyone, anyone by learning, by learning the definition of, of, of who deserves reparation, by understanding uh, if, if, if by definition that I learned, you qualify for reparations, I feel like, yes, you deserve it. Right. Because Caribbean there's another group. In the Caribbean should get reparations in the United Wait, States. A Caribbean? Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, Dawn. Okay. What I feel is that they do have CARICOM and the Caribbean people here in New York City should be included in the CARICOM uh, reparations. Okay. Right? And I think we can support each other's claim, but I don't think we all should be included in the claim here in the U.S. Well, listen, listen to me, listen to you me. You understand? I, I hear you and I understand. I, I know we have to switch it up. Here's my thing. As I said earlier, and I want to say it again, I wasn't too knowledgeable about it. I don't know what CARICOM is, but I'm going to research it. I have to stick to what I said and how I was raised. Now that it's brought to my attention, do I feel like if if, if reparations, of, reparations, and you can correct me if I'm um, with my man, and my man, uh, Sonny, 
Um, people that, if if your ancestors or your forefathers uh, fought in the war with slaves here, uh, bled on this soil, I feel like from what I understand, in layman's terms, because, you know, I'm not as articulate as a lot of you, so I had to break shit down to me in hood terms. I feel like you guys deserve reparations. And as far as Caribbean, if Caribbean, if Caribbean, because I, I really don't know. See, so I can't really speak on it because I'm setting myself up for a trap. So I don't know if there were Caribbeans back in the days how you know they fought in certain wars and I don't I don't know that shit yet. So I have to research it first to give you that proper answer. I don't know. And yeah. sometimes to give me a history lesson. I have to research it. I, I don't know if there were any Caribbeans that came at the same time as certain ancestors that was here. And if they if they bled on the soil, if they fought in the war, if they went through so I don't know to say if they deserve it or not. I will have to research it. And also, um, Sorry, uh, I thought we would do it two minutes. Caracom because um, even for those oh, uh, people that you're talking Next about hand. that Next probably hand, fought in the war fair. here or was here in the U.S. earlier on, right, it's still a whole lot make of the people decision. who weren't go to the next hand. who weren't here in the uh, Please, Dawn, let me finish what I'm saying. Who weren't here, like that came in the, uh, what, in the 2000s or the late 1990s, who weren't, you know, in the U.S. And uh, these Pan-African groups want to include all Black people. And I just feel that they should be covered under CARICOM or if they're African, the independent um, nations on the continent of Africa, they can, you know, put forward their own gotcha. claims towards and, and those colonizers I, or oppressors. I'm so sorry. I understand. I got you. As I said, you know, extend the grace to me to do more research and understand. I heard what you said, and I, I'm going to look into it. To All give right, let me proper let, answer. Let me wrap this up. Um, we, I'm a, if everybody can, just do like a minute, 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? You know, that way we could get the, everybody could get their build off because it's a lot. It's the people in the request in my inbox. It's a lot. It's uh, a lot. I, 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 got, I got a time limit. Flip got a time limit. Hell so, yeah. Uh, go saying, ahead. Uh, go yeah. ahead. Jubilee, sell. Um, and then we, 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 you know, we'll move the room around. Go ahead, Jubilee, bro. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I had a few questions, but I think he answered a few of them. So I'm just say this. So I, I'm not from New York City, but I grew up a lot of, uh, around a lot of Africans and Caribbeans. And yeah, we all grew up with similar, um, like environment. Um, you know, participation in culture, culture and stuff like that. But there was always a point. I don't hear where, anybody. Anybody talking? Yeah, Jubilee talking. You you probably you probably in the you, matrix, Jubilee, bro. Drop down and yeah. I'll bring you right back up. I, I'm gonna swing at the cell real quick. Go ahead, Sonny. I think Sister Sean was up here before me. All right, that's that's cool. Everybody, please, one minute and thirty seconds. Okay, go ahead, I'm Sister gonna Sean, go you got really it. quick. Okay, I'm gonna go really quick. First of all, respect. Um, to this uh, gentleman, Mr. Uh, Queens, I just uh, got wind of uh, the debacle, but thank you for coming on and having a conversation. I wanna answer one question um, that you had. It wasn't what my statement was gonna be. Um, I think you said something like, you know, what is this, you know, rift between, you know, Africans and, you know, foundation of black Americans and freedmen. There is no rift, right? The rift becomes, and it's not just African, the rift becomes when these other groups become obstructionist. And what I mean by that, uh, obstructing pathways and obstructing our ambitions and our gains within this country. See, that's a problem, right? And what I've seen over time is a serious lack of understanding of the freedman history, who we are, the foundational Black American. It's a lack of understanding of that history is this causing the rift. And now you're becoming obstructionist when you don't even know it. So I'm glad that you at least acknowledged it. And a quick and dirty piece on CARICOM. Um, CARICOM is the equivalent of a reparations claim to the former colonizers, like the French, the Spaniards, and Europe, Europeans, that the, a collection of Caribbean countries went and had begun to file against their colonizers. Um, the problem is, is CARICOM does not 
include the foundational black American and it does not include the descendants of US, US keyword, US chattel slavery and freedmen. So what we take particular offense to is how do you try to wedge your way into our reparations claim when your own reparations claim doesn't even include us. So that's somewhat of a hypocrisy. So that's the quick and dirty on that. And um, quickly about says reparations won't happen. I'm going to tell you it, it can happen. We have a couple of d uh, things that we have to continue to fight for and we don't stop fighting. The fighting continues. We have a deficit of people in power with no backbone. We have a lot of fearful. We have a lack of liberation lawyers. And then we have this whole white supremacy using immigrants, including the Caribbeans, for these red wedge issues to give them fodder against us. Just like you mentioned, the, the lieutenant governor of the state of Virginia talking about we need to get over slavery. That is wedging your way. Statements like that, those are damaging statements. Statements like that does not help our reparations claim. And that's what we have a problem with. So now, in fact, I got, I wish I would, we, it's, it's not just white supremacy anymore. And here's what we're facing. It's, it's, it's just supremacy. It's supremacy because supremacy is generally a mindset. It's not just white supremacy. Now we're dealing with immigrant su supremacy. So if you could take that back to your followers with the understanding, but I completely respect you. Um, but yeah, we have some things that we need to do. We're going to continue to fight our fight for reparations. We will never say that it won't happen because if I say reparations won't happen, I may as well sit around and my ancestors should have said that slavery wouldn't have ended. And I fold my chair. I appreciate you, Sister Sean. I like uh, that go ahead, sit. My chair. That was nice. Yeah, that's 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 the news. That's, that's yo, the news. Yo, can I can I get back in? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Ju Jubilee. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm gonna You did jump down. Uh, I'm putting the timer on y'all, <laughs> family. I, I got my. It's, it's literally it's gonna be a minute and thirty seconds. If, if when I hop in, y'all, I may. If y'all don't hear me talking, I'm gonna have to drop y'all down. Go ahead, Jubilee, bro. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to say, um, I think it's a deeper conversation uh, uh, that is under reparations that needs to be had. So I grew up around a lot of Africans and Caribbeans too, and we we did share you know similar uh culture of our environment like local shit like you know slang and fashion and stuff like that but it always came a point where there was a separation not a separation but just differences that we would that will come up you know what i'm saying like sometimes it'd be like tangible or topical or whatever like oh y'all do y'all food like this whatever but then there'll be other times when they will um think it'll be like another brooding uh topic like you know what I'm saying? Y'all are lazy. And then another one that's really popular that they that they talk about is I'm not black. I'm, you know, blank, whatever. You know, they put on Dominicans, but it's plenty of other people that say I'm not black. So I'm just I just can't believe that come, you come from New York, New York, maybe, maybe so. But for for us to sit here and say uh, we just thought we was all black. I, I don't know that. It, 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 it's deeper than that. But what I would hold on, to say hold on. Wait, too, wait, 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 wait. See, see. This is the problem that I have now. Now, and, and I know we got to keep it short, but brother, if I tell you that, brother, that's what it is. I don't have to lie. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm not dis, I'm not disregarding oh, okay. your experience. I'm just saying you, it's okay. hard for me to believe. I understand. It's, yeah, I'm just so, saying it's hard for me to believe too. I swear to God, I, I'm not gonna. I, it's hard for me to believe too that this. I had to call my father as a grown man. And he said yes, but we didn't teach you that. I was just in a fucking la la land in Brooklyn. It was a melting pot. I swear to God. No, I, I, I no, I feel that, but 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 here's the thing though. So so and and I'm gonna leave this rhetorical question open, but I I want when people say are they not down with the separation, I want to know what does that separation look like? And two and I think in 2008, Caribbeans got together and they started a campaign for delineation on the 2010 census. That's that's separation on paper. The same thing we fighting for. Now you now we got Carecom. And it's in the and I think the problem is, is that we get confused because the children of immigrants see themselves as black Americans, but they don't see them. They don't they have they have a closer uh, connection with what's going on here than what's going on in a, a family home country. So I think a solution would be to maybe for the children of immigrants to start pushing care calm and learn about that if they if they care. But either way. The, the, there's no such there's no such thing as separation. You still gonna have your friends. You still gonna have people that you work with and things like that. It's just that the I gotta you, I, I gotta wrap you up, Jubilee. You know I fuck right. with you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, bro. 
Jubilee. Uh, Sonny, Sally, is it my goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell for okay. Dreamo. First of all, Sonny, uh, Booby, Mel, thank y'all for having a space. This is good for accountability purposes. Queen, thank you for coming in. Let me just say why I take offense. I'm in South Carolina, the state that was the capital of slavery. I'm running for office, and my main plat the main thing about my platform is reparations. When someone says reparations is not going to happen, it's offensive. Now, Queen, it sounds like you are a descendant of people from the Caribbean, so this doesn't apply to you. But for people who are freemen, the descendants of those who were emancipated by America, saying reparations will not happen is insulting. If that was the case, our ancestors could have said, since the Ray brought this point up, that slavery was never going to end. There was no indication that slavery would ever, ever end. And we did slave revolt after slave revolt after slave revolt, and slavery continued and didn't end it. There was no indication that Jim Crow and redlining and lynch mobs and all those stuff were ever going to end. And yet we brought it to an end. So people come here, your family came here because of the legacy, because of the fight of black Americans and the fact that we did not stop fighting. That's why you are able to be here, okay? If we had stopped fighting and we just had this never going to end attitude, you would not be here right now. So don't come now and say that what we're fighting for is never going to happen when you are benefiting from something we fought to make happen when at that time people said it was never going to end. Okay? And that's really the whole point I want to bring out right there. Salute. I got you. I heard you. All right. Respect. Padrino. And the last thing, the work, they like, I'm sorry, Connie brought this up and be very quick, Sonny. There are people out here doing real reparations work out here in these streets. It's funny how people like you have a platform, never reach out to those of us doing work in the streets. We, I know you don't know us because we don't have a big name. We're pretty much nobodies in the eyes of people who have a big platform. But try to reach out and see what's going on in the movement before you cast aspersions towards it by saying it's never going to happen. Sonny, that, that's it. Thank y'all. <laughs> I like that guy. He just wanted to get his shit off. All right. Salute. <laughs> I get it. Got you. Respect. Respect. Definitely. We go, we going hey, we going to swing it to Padrino. Uh Lou. Sonny, you got the shit lit. Sonny, you got me. You got hey, you, you got it lit. You pulled up. Hey, and it's people. Listen. It's, hey, people, hey, in, it's people in the comments yo, talking yo, about. Yo. Hey, look, look, Flip. It's people in the comments talking about we we got you when the flip said what he said. He's standing on it. Right. And like. I'm gonna be out, like I said, bro. I don't know how many people like know you in the space, bro. Like I've been watching this shit from the flip, the, the flip the script podcast. Yes. I, so when you when I heard you say that, it really fucked with me, bro. My cousin, I understand, Arms, I, I, I understand. He, he had told you like I I've I, I been fucked with you. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't looking at it no other way. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I can appreciate you pulling up having I a hope, conversation. Hope, real, real, real quick, real quick, and and and. and. That's why I'm happy my man Imani is in here. Imani, because he, you know, he he is a guy that motivates me to do the knowledge. Your flip, come on, because if you know me for flip the script, you know I'm ignorant. Like even the guy that just spoke just now, the person, like you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I would have responded differently, and I understand the passion because people been fighting for this for a long time. You know, like I do, I do hope that one day, you know, you guys could explain to me, break down to me, like because. When you're doing a lot of work out here, it's hard to keep up with everything unless you focus. And I just hope y'all can explain to me like the difference between ADOS and FBA and and I, I, I this is my first time hearing about the Freedmen. I don't know that I just Googled it. It's my first time hearing about it. My first time hearing these names. So I just wish one day, like after this and on a late night or something, it could just you know, because I speak to the CEO of the A the ADOS. I don't know that I heard there's a lot of difference. I want to know what's the difference in these groups. You know what I mean? So when when that time comes, I just I just put that out. Yeah, there. We, that time come, we 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 chop it up, and I, I followed you, so you know. Cool, thank uh, you. We right, yeah. we we'll, we'll chop it up, bro. Let's get, let's, uh, get the rest of, let's, let's get the rest of the questions together. All right, Padrino, Lou, Fax. All right, what's the deal? You can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, bro. All right, that's a bet. What's the deal, Queens? Uh, yo, I've been Salute. checking your joint out for a minute, man. Back since you had the uh, flip the script joint, all that. Uh, you know, had just about everybody on there from New York, Jersey, Philly, whatever the case may be. So shout out to that. So like, like Sonny said, when I seen a clip, I'm confused. I'm like, dang, Queens, like, what type of time you on? Like, I remember you was doing the skits on the gram and all that. So for real, for real, like, the only reason why I really came up here because I know there's a lot of reparations. They ask you a couple questions, uh, just chimed in conversations, whatever the case may be. But I really want folks to know, like, 
Queens don't know about none of this stuff that we're talking about, right? It's really new information to him because Queens is more so on the hip hop side of this stuff. Yeah. So what I'm asking or what I'm offering or just even to bridge the gap kind of sort of is Queens, you, you're on a platform. Uh, you're on a hip hop platform. Most black Americans listen to hip hop. Most black Americans are in tune. Anytime something go viral on Joe Bun podcast, it go viral. Everybody see it. So I'm asking Queens, look, this is the Olive Branch. You're on the show. If you can get in tune with what we're saying and you can make a space for individuals who are reparationists to further put down the information so that more people can understand. Because Queens, we're not asking you to be an expert on this. I'm not at least. I don't know about these other niggas. Where I'm asking you, look, put people in a situation and predicament who know the information, who can spit the knowledge so that they can get it. Because you have the platform. Now, if you ain't trying to do that, I'm just keeping it going. You really shouldn't be having any conversation. But if you're willing to do that, I think that's thorough and I think that's sturdy because we're trying to move the conversation to the next level. We're in different levels of conversation, but we're having amongst ourselves, individuals who are somewhat intelligent, some people who really shouldn't be having a conversation, but that's another conversation for another day. But you have a platform where we go to mass and get that. And I think this olive branch, we can take this conversation to the next level. So you win the Matrix, Padrino, bro. Somebody's going to be getting a tap on the shoulder after that, and I think his name is Queens. Oh, man, they're going to tap my man slip on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I think Queens? So. I'm sure of it. For everything that Padrino just said he could be a benefit to is exactly why he's going to get a phone call or a DM, and um, we'll see. I'm a I don't know. I don't know what that means. Tap on the shoulder. That's what I'm talking about. Tap, tap on the shoulder. Know. Man, you, we, you know. Getting, we know. We know. You stand about. You stand. You standing in an authoritative power position, right? Because you you went here with the grassroots, so it, it's not. We don't. We don't answer to nobody. Like we don't got no 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 nobody who could cancel us or nothing like that. You getting raw, authentic talking points. You know what I'm saying? And like a lot of times, like on big podcasts or on big, on big platforms. Like they give you some watered down shit and not have the, the people that's really grassroots. Padrino, you hot. Yeah, Padrino, you. You there, Padrino? Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Finish your bill. I probably. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, I'm probably in the Matrix because I can't hear him when he responded. Yeah, you did say you was on the way to the mosque. I, I hit you up. You know, we talked on the back channel, but see see if you could finish your bill. And um, if you're not, then we just move. We move the hands around. Nah. Nah, nah, I was just at y'all hear me? Y'all can hear you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we can't hear you now. Let me, let me keep the room flowing. Go ahead. Um uh, Lou, you there? If not, then we we go to um we go to uh Don. We uh, no, my brother Straw Hat. Go ahead, Straw Hat. Yeah, so when she up. say, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When she say tap on the shoulder, she mean that they're gonna tell me to stop talking about this. You saying? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what she's saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these big platforms do stay away from politics and these type of talks. They do, but I don't give a fuck. Not, not about the. Come, I don't. They can't tell. I mean, and if they try, I'm gonna still do what I want to do. You know, right now, I, I, right now, I'm in the DMs. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep you up to date. Right now, I just hit Miss Yvette Carnell up, the Ados. You know, I just hit up, just talking to her. Like, I'm gonna learn more about your movement. I'm gonna learn more about different people's movements. Cause now y'all got me interested in it, and hey, they may call me a culture vulture or whatever, but it's not that. Cause now seeing how passionate you guys are, I want to learn more. I do. I want to understand so I could, I could come up with my own opinion. That's that's important. I just want you. I just want to say this: you are going to go through a change when you learn this information and you get more nuance on this this undercurrent of uh, tension here. And I'm just asking that. I don't know. I, you are going to go through a change and you're going to have to make a decision, you know, what side you're going to be on. And I would say Godfrey, even though he does sometimes cross the line, he's a good example of a of an ally. Um, he understands um, and he understands his place and he feels like you do. He grew up here. You know, he in his heart, he feels American, but he knows. And I think you, if you would watch a couple of interviews with him, with Vlad, um, even though Vlad is not a favorite either. But I think your heart is in the right place. And I understand the the emotional. This is an emotional thing for all of our cousins who, you know, thought one way and then they come across us and it's like, wow, where's all this coming from? But we do have to get onto the other side of this, to the olive branch. And maybe this is a, a, a step or could be a step, but I just ask that you, I don't know, kind of process your emotions. I think 
you know, some of it's hurtful, you know, when you realize, you know, the relationship that we have might not be, or, or external forces have brought us to a place of misunderstanding. And we have to just set the boundaries back right so that we can go forward together. Definitely, definitely. Let me get to my brother Straw Hat. Respect. And uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Straw Hat, you got it. Uh, you're, what up, Sonny? You got another one. What up, Flip? Um, I come from like Bless. the battle. I got. I come from like the battle rap, battle rap side of shit. When I first got on this app, like when Surf was setting up the Midnight Madness, Flip me. You got a lot of the same peer groups like Jazz, my dog, Forty, my dog, Forty. Being uh, started spaces, she said she got uh, hit up. You know, quote unquote, from the FB people, and they tore her ass up. So I just want to say, like, shout out, like, respect to you saying that you don't really have the information. My man, Sonny. He real familiar with the battle rights side thing. So I think y'all be the perfect collab for you to get the information. Yeah. If anybody, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all both have like a similar background knowing about the uh, battle rap shit and all that. So I just want to say shout out to you, Sonny, for hosting Space Getting Flip in here. Flip, I just really would strongly say bye. Sonny is a guy who really on the street and really know. Because I ain't know a lot about this shit neither. I was coming here trying to set up Midnight Madness battles, get with surfing them. And then one file led to another. And then I'm finding out all this information about people that's really delineating. And it's not xenophobia. It's just people really trying to get their identity and uh, not be uh, under the social construct of all just being black. So if you ain't follow Sonny back, bro, I, I really think you should because, you know, the information that's being put out there, like, he really got it. And I just want to shout out to you for representing uh, not only the podcast and the flip the script, but the battle rap side of things because we on this app too, and we out here deep. And you, you know what I'm saying, kept it real and was like, you know what, I really don't know all this information. So I take pride in that because that's how my beginnings on this app started. So I just wanted to put that out there. Shout out to Sonny, shout out to Flip Eric and that's going on, man. It's a, it's a good thing. I like when them two bridges uh, come together. That's all I wanted to say, you heard? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Nice. Peace to the guys. Shout out to my brother Straw Hat, man. Um, I appreciate that, man. Um, it's on you, uh, Don, Don, uh, Queso, Queso. Yo, 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 Queso, Queso, Queso. What's up, y'all? Can hear me? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, got it, bro. You. Yeah. Um. So listen, man. That's, that's all I wanted to say, bro. Uh, how it goes is, bro. Um, Flip. I understand that. I appreciate you for even bringing that topic up because this is something that we need to talk about. And you brought it to a major platform, so that's the good look on it. Regardless of how if it was bad or it was good, it was a it was a good look for the conversation to get started. And no matter what, I respect that shit what you were saying because that was your opinion. And at the end of the day, that's all we can give. So if you want to get into this conversation, you want to dig deep because I just got into this conversation myself. I learned about the FBA. I learned about what's the Caribbean people, all that shit. Because being somebody from the Caribbean, I didn't even know that they were saying that we shouldn't get reparations. So, hold on a second. All that, all that, all that shit there, bro. You just need to jump into the conversation, bro, and learn more. And that's that, the best part about you, bro, is that you're willing to learn. And you want to, you want to understand more. So, if these spaces are the perfect chance. Shout out to Sunny for holding the space and getting you in here, so that way we can enlighten you and make sure that you know. What you what you're saying and when you're saying so just just keep pushing bro and have the conversation bro that's that's the main part about it is people gonna agree with you it's people that's gonna disagree with you so just keep having the conversation bro and you're gonna learn everything you need to know and you're gonna know where you stand and you can make an informed decision after after you get the get the knowledge and the information and that's all that's all i want to say bro appreciate y'all for letting me up letting me speak flip you know i fought with you so appreciate you bro Definitely appreciate that, bro, Don, man. It's on uh, Lou. You there, bro? If not, we're going to swing it to John. John. John Small. Yeah, hey, man. I just want to come flip what's up. Uh, listen to the pod. Sure. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, bro. Yeah, I hear you. I, yeah. I, yeah, flip. I listen to the pod all the time. I just got a couple quick, quick, quick things to say because I know y'all trying to get off this shit. One, just got to be careful saying that about reparations. Martin Luther King said his next march on Washington is about our check. So saying that is disrespectful to him because the CIA put a bullet in his head over that shit. Two, as far as this whole uh, black American Caribbean thing, uh, a divide or whatever, I don't really want to call it no divide. I think it's more of a cultural thing because you got to understand, they know we coming for our check and legally they can't avoid it because reparations is, is some international shit. It's like international law. So legally they can't avoid it. 60 Minutes just put out this thing saying, Blues music came from like Moroccan music. So if you could uh, culturally erase a group of people, 
you could erase them physically. So you got all these people saying hip hop is Caribbean. Now that's not true. Shout out Cool Hurt. But DJ Disco Mario King and Grandmaster Flowers come before Cool Hurt. So you got the media trying to literally erase our culture and give it to other people. So I think you need to have people like Tariq Nasheed up on who his hip hop doc is dope, man. You got Copeland Rock, Grandmaster Kaz, uh, all these all these four founders on it since y'all are hip hop podcast. Have them up there so we can uh, control and can compact our culture because if, as long as we control our culture, we got a strong united people. But yeah, they come. We, they know we coming for our check, and legally they can't avoid it. So that's why you see a lot of these weird n- little articles saying jazz is from such and such, blues is from like I said. They said blues came from like Morocco music. Hip hop is Caribbean. No, they, obviously there are Caribbean forefathers, but culturally it's Black American. Cool Herc says it's from James Brown music. So yeah, I just want to be short, man. Just be careful what you say about reparations because it's disrespectful to people like MLK. They putting bullets in people's head over this reparation shit because they know legally they can't avoid it. Germany just gave like a couple billion to Poland over reparations. We could take it to international courts and get it popping over there. So they know legally they can't avoid this shit. So it's important for someone who looked like us to be careful for what he say because even though you're not our ethnicity, you're still part of our race. You is like our Jamaican cousin or some shit. So that's all I want to say. Yeah, I appreciate that respect. Thank you. Definitely. You, you from the CO, uh, John? No, nah, I'm from Georgia originally. I just live up in Columbus. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's that's what's up. That's peace. Uh, go ahead, uh, DW. Hey, what's up? I'm Sunny G. Peace and blessings. Thank you for having the space, Booby, everybody in the space. And I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised, especially in Brooklyn East Flappers, DeVille, the 90s. Um, some of the, what he's saying is true. This conversation is not being out. This conversation is not being half outside, because unfortunately, New York City is the grounds for Pan Africanism. We fall underneath this flat blackness. That's the problem. But when it's Labor Day, that's when everybody start delineating, rubbing their flags. Okay. So again, if you was to speak to the average person in the hood, they're not gonna know about reparation and delineation. We kind of new to that, and we get into that point, especially with all these reparations meetings that we having. So the only thing I can say to you, Queen's Flip, because I was going in on your ass on the timeline, and I'm not going to take that shit back. If you don't know what you're speaking on, if you if you have an opinion about something and you don't have a lot of knowledge on it, just don't speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Just like I respect the fact that you said that you're going to continue to do more research and learn about it, especially hearing the different perspectives in the space. But at the same time, just don't speak on shit that you don't know about. That's the only thing I have to say, because a lot of times this shit is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? You you on the fucking public platform and you saying this shit that makes us look that make that that shit it just push everything it just makes the shit you know what i'm saying really complicated you know what i'm saying it's just not a good it's not a good look you, if you don't know about it don't speak on it wait till after the fact and that's about it but at the end of the day like you said before even though you said that you made a mistake you didn't know too much about it i'll give you the benefit of doubt i you know what i'm saying i'll give you the benefit of doubt that but at the end of the day, just don't speak on shit that you don't know nothing about. And that's all I have to say on that. But um, yeah, um, New York City is the ground zero for Pan-Africanism. When I was at the Harlem Day Parade, all you saw was Pan-African flags, okay? People are not delineating like that. So it's a new thing for a lot of people. It's a new thing. And, you know, unfortunately, that is how it is. But we get to that point where everybody is starting to love and embrace themselves. Because if you was to speak to a Caribbean person, they would think they're Black Americans. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. How are you a Black American? You wasn't even born here. You know what I'm saying? But then, like I said, you would see what American flag, they rep America all year round until you see that fucking colorful flag waving in the air. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Hey yo, hey yo, Sonny. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, they passionate, y'all. She yeah. breathing. She breathing heavy as shit. Damn. Whoa. Yeah. This is my gang banger, man. I'm playing. I'm holding my baby. That's, that's why I'm holding my kids. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm, the combo I'm, slip. Yo, this reparation is crit, nigga. This is like gang banger. She the only one that made me want to say sorry. <laughs> Look, I was yeah. going in with your ass. Okay, I was like, what the fuck I, is he talking about? So I, I know got you. I tweet. I respect it. I respect That's DW, from, D-W, D-W from, from, she's from the city. <laughs> okay, she's from the city. Got, my studio, my studio was in Brooklyn. DW, I want no smoke with you, girl. I got you. Yeah, this, this, this. I mean, you know, I think that a lot of this. I'm gonna be honest with you, Flip, man. Like the, we got like a lot of talking points in, in the grassroots, right? Um, and they're they not really getting the the proper platform. And the proper just do 
because a lot of times people just want to bullshit and banter. And that's that's cool, right? But I feel like a lot of time, like as far as like the black media goes, they not really we don't we not we don't really get elevated and get a proper platform. You know what I'm saying? But we, we get to talk about bullshit and banter, uh a whole bunch of shit that don't really mean shit or add shit to the black community. Uh and then, you know, people who really, you know, are, are doing some serious or this reparation conversation, because this shit is serious, but like I said, we're gonna be out there Washington, DC, April the 15th at the Lincoln Memorial. I'm put this this shit coming all out our pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't, we not getting funded for none of this. You know what I mean? Like we, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopping in the whip. I'm driving people, going to be bringing their, you know, their kids and their family and stuff out there. So the reparations conversation is, is real, and it got like a lot of steam and a lot of legs behind it, right? And, and instead of people who got platforms or podcasts with hundreds of thousands of views, or you know what I'm saying, who, who could like be like, hey man, I'm, I'm a swing you on, give you like a 15, 20 minute cook up or a drop. They they just they want they want to talk about Cardi B sexy red and a whole bunch of dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we we kind of got to be able to mix it in with the conversation a little bit, man, because it, it it do look kind of wild, man. We we got serious topics and serious issues in the black community that we really need to address, man. And I feel like reparations is one of them because we're not playing in this 2024 election, regardless if you if you Democrat or Republican, we holding everybody feet to the fire. Right. And we saying if you don't have specific tangibles and policies for black Americans, we not fucking with you. Just like this, like how you, you gave the money to the Ukrainians, to the Afghanians. Everybody been getting money, you know, getting, you know, chipped off when they come to America, except for the people who actually built this country. You know, like, like my boy Franklin say, brick by brick. You know what I'm saying? Like piece by piece. You know what I'm saying? I, I trace my lineage back to the, the Franklin County, uh, you know, uh, Virginia, the Maddox Plantation. My great grandma, my fourth great grandmother, she was enslaved for 38 years, bro. Well, my other grandmother, she was enslaved. She got her freedom from her death from her slave master deathbed, right? She went to Pennsylvania. They came back and got and got her from Pennsylvania, put her back in the cap in the slavery, and she had to fight and go to court and get her freedom all over again. Mm. You know what Understood. I'm saying? Like so bro. it's it's like it, it is, it's it's a real sensitive and it's a real emotional topic. So that's why a lot of people are really passionate about it. But I, I wanted I ain't I ain't jump out the window on you because like I said, I'm like. I'm talking to my cousin, you know, but oh, he in his space too. I'm like, man, like I, you know, man, nigga been fucking with Flip for for some years now. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I really just wanted to give the, you know, the proper tools and education. So when you had this conversation again, you know, you could come out there quick. I ain't wanna this ain't no we ain't trying to run you down or nothing like that. If it you know what I'm saying, like we just wanna have a bill and a dialogue. So I appreciate you for coming in, even having a conversation. Cause a lot of people not gonna have, you know, the no no nuts like that for real, for real. When they say some some shit that you know that the black community or the grassroots disagree with, they just gonna let it stand out there. You know what I'm saying? And it can become dangerous because white people use that talking point all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like from both parties, like well, you know they they take the, the the flip shit, the flip, you know the the clip, and be like, well, Queens flip said, you know we y'all don't we we cool. You know what I'm saying? So I can see that's that's that's, that's the important part of it. I got you. Okay, let's get some more. Let's get some more questions. Like you know, me and you will talk all day, sonny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. If Lou, if Lou here, um, then if not, then we, we, Lou, where, where you at, my brother? I'll just pass it real quick because I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. Give me, give me like fifteen. All right, then we'll go to um Stephen. If Stephen got something to say, Stephen, you there? If not, then we we keep the room flowing. I gotta go to. I want to get Jay Scott up here because he said in the comments he want to chop it up with you. If not, we will go to people who ain't speak. I'm gonna go to Black Native. Hey, what's up, Sonny? What's up, Booby? Hey, uh, Queen Flip. Queen is it Queens Flip? Queens Flip. Yeah, y'all can just call me. What's Flip. up? Queens what's up, Flip. brother? I'm from Brooklyn. Doing? Brooklyn too, born and raised. Now that you've heard the grassroots speak about how important reparations are and what it means to. Um, our lineage. Will you go back on your podcast and clarify what you said and make a public apology about uh, how we shouldn't receive reparations? Is that something that you're willing to do? Yeah, he already yes. did it. I, I, oh, I did. You play, you play I did the clip that already. Hey, hey, Flip, play that oh. clip again if you got it. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that because I was out yesterday. We had a black expo. I'm out here in North Carolina now and I let it be known. 
Uh, we had doctors out here, black do black American doctors. We had business, and I was out there spreading the word about reparations. So we're very serious about this this movement. So um, I'm glad that you you know you made a public apology. Next time, you know, don't speak on something you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you have all uh, the information that you need, and you can make a, a conscious decision, brother. All right. Yeah, I got you. I'm trying to find the clip, but I got you. Thank you. Yes, yes. You're welcome. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay Scott. You got it, bro. Hey, what's going on, y'all? So good afternoon. Uh, you know, I'm speaking as a Jamaican American um, over here, and I just wanted to, you know, point out that um, the Black American, you know, struggle is, you know, something that's about more than just uh, slavery. There's a lot of oppression and crimes that have happened to uh, Black Americans since then. So, you know, personally, while I do agree that, you know, we all share the same race, you know, I do understand the need for Black Americans Americans to delineate and then get a reparations package that's actually specific to them because they were actually promised reparations, um, you know, once the Civil War was ended, 40 acres and a mule, um, and then that never, you know, happened. So, you know, I 100%, you know, like get the reason um, behind delineation. But um, at the same time, I'd just like to point out that one of the you know, the worst parts about this conversation is that, you know, sometimes people wind up generalizing, like as they're talking about it, like um, I do see some people, um, you know, within the uh, like the foundational black American movement who will go out of their way um, to, you know, generalize about all black immigrants and Caribbean and African immigrants as they're having this conversation. And I think that, you know, really takes it to a place where it doesn't need to go. So. Um, and I just think, you know, as we're all talking about this, we should definitely avoid the generalizations while realizing that just because, you know, there's a separate Black American experience that does need reparations, that doesn't mean we share stuff in common, that doesn't mean, you know, we can't work together um, on all issues. And at the end of the day, we're all Americans. There are common problems that all of us face. Um, but we just want to avoid generalizations, like as we're talking about it. And um, you know, on top of that, you know, I, I really hope that in general, Americans, not just black Americans, but Americans overall, um, become more aware about how the U.S. government and NATO is actually destabilizing um, all these countries that, you know, Caribbean people and African people are coming from because, you know, there is a part of the, you know, and again, I'm not saying this is all FBAs because I'm against generalizing, but there is a part of the FBA movement that, it seems to be against immigrants in general. And, you know, th those people in particular don't seem to want to acknowledge the role that the American government plays in destabilizing these countries. So, you know, at the end of the day, I do agree that, you know, um, like immigrants should be involved in what's happening, um, you know, within their own countries. I'm personally, um, I, while I was born in Jamaica, I grew up in Turks and Caicos, so I am pretty involved in what's happening over there. I'm doing my best to get a little bit more involved in Jamaica too, but, you know, long story short, we can recognize that, are, that there are differences and Black Americans do deserve a unique reparations package while also recognizing that you know, just because you're, you know, a black American and you, you recognize the need for black American reparations, it doesn't mean that you can't also be a pan-Africanist because there are benefits to black people in general working together. Because, you know, let's let's just be honest for a second. Africa is the most resource rich country on the planet. And, you know, if we are working together and all, you know, trying to figure out you know, how we can put our heads together. That's good for Black Americans. That's good for Africans. That's good for everybody. So, you know, I think- Can we get an anti-genocide agreement from all of the tribes over there in the 54 different countries? Uh, sorry, what was that? I said, can we get an anti-genocide agreement from all of the tribes in the 54 countries over there? because they can't seem to keep their hands off of one another and they're still practicing slavery. Yeah, so like, yeah. well, what? you know, at the end of the day, you know, the African history is definitely a complicated thing, but 
if you look at the governments, um, you know, in Africa, a lot of them um, are our corrupted own by, you know, American companies. A lot of them. We got our own problems. Yeah. No, no. Listen, I'm not our saying that problems. black Americans need to take on all the problems of Africa and the Caribbean. But what I am saying is that America needs to recognize the role the CIA plays. Um, in destabilizing you, these countries. So, Jay, yeah, you and CC and is actually Jay, a perfect you example. Keep, yeah. Jay, you keep inserting nationalism into a conversation that is specifically for Black American reparations. We have nothing to do with what the United States government does to other nations. And like Don is trying to tell you, Pan-Africanism is a failed concept, which is proven by uh, Kwame Nkrumah, and Marcus Garvey, they could not get that popping in their own countries. Right now, Africans are genociding themselves. We see what's happening in the Caribbean and what we're saying to these other countries, these melanated countries, is please come together in your countries, on your continent. You come together first before you come and lecture us about what we need to do in the nation that we built. You coming into this space preaching to us when Sorry to say it, your countries are failures. What we're saying to you is please stop injecting outside external conversations because you're pushing an agenda. That is wrong. It is hurtful. We are trying to survive right now. The United States government is giving millions, millions and millions upon millions to immigrants. This is the new Homestead Act. Everybody's getting funded above us to leapfrog before us. The Jews are still getting reparations to this day. The Native Americans are getting reparations. There's a huge list of people, ethnic groups getting reparations and you keep coming in here. You, what you don't understand is that you are harming our people. We are trying to survive. This isn't a game like Sonny said, this isn't about banter. We are starving. We are being starved out of our own country. Somebody mentioned, I think it was Padrino, they're stealing our culture and giving pieces of it to everybody. Why? Because there is cultural cachet to that, because it is lucrative. So please, I implore you, Jay, please stop it. Stop with that. We don't have anything to do with the United States destabilizing anyone. We fought in every war. We fought to overcome the Exclusion Act, which prohibited Caribbeans, Africans, Mexicans and Asians specifically from coming into this country and Adam Clayton Powell, Martin Luther King and our civil rights leaders fought immediately after the 1965 Civil Rights Act to implement the, um, uh, the Immigration Act because we thought that Caribbeans like you would come here and side with us. But instead, what we're seeing is Africans having racial slurs for us, Akata. Jareer, Abid, we see the Jamaicans and the Caribbeans calling us out of our names. Everyone comes here and calls us lazy. How are we lazy when we have been here fighting in the belly of the beast? I will close with that, but I implore you to stop it, Jay. Please stop. Okay. We're passionate, yeah. We're passionate because this is about our family and our survival. So I live in Los Angeles, half of the black American freedmen population in two you Queens. ADOS, DOACS, Freedmen, FBA, um, American Indians, we all know we're the same. Somebody told you that earlier. Okay. We're people who were emancipated, but we are here watching our family members lose ground. We make up in Los Angeles over 60% of the homeless. This isn't about what's happening in the Caribbean. That's a conversation you should hold a space with Caribbeans or with Africans and you unite. But stop coming in here trying to dilute and distract and deflect. Let us have this conversation with our people. We are in the educational phase of this movement. We are educating people and mobilizing people. We have made reparations one of the top topics in the nation. It was on in the last presidential campaign. It was in the forefront of the conversation. It's being mentioned everywhere because people in this space and people outside the space are working hard. We don't need anyone coming in here lecturing us about Pan-Africanism. You go and build that movement while we do this movement so we can feed our families and get our land back. The debt that is owed is not just for slavery. 
It's for peonage, convict leasing, redlining, Jim Crow, medical experiments, mass incarceration, land theft, the war on drugs. I could go on and on. Those are debts that have accrued for over 400 years. That's the conversation. Thank you. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm going to play the audio to, for the people so they can see, you know, what what I said on the podcast that came out today. Keep that shit, bro. Yeah. Uh, I, got, yeah, I got something to say. What's up? Am I allowed? <laughs> so, the podcast. No, listen. La- last part, I said something that may have came off insensitive um, about reparations. I've been getting attacked all week this week on Twitter. You ain't fraud them up? No, 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 you can't fraud them up. I said something about reparations, about black people. We not get reparations, let it go. They, you know, they proceeded to remind me that, yo, Flip, you Caribbean, you not black. Fuck you, they was cursing me out. And I did some research and I realized it came off insensitive. And I understand. My point I was just making was that I feel like when it comes to reparations, that the government plays with black people. Right? And that's just how I feel. Japanese got their reparations, the Jewish people got their reparations, Native Americans got their reparations, but when it comes to us, we didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, that's how I felt. But I understand. I just want to acknowledge the people. I, I get it. Salute to the FBA and Adolf and all you. There's no smoke. I feel how I feel, but I do not want to come off insensitive to your feelings or what your ancestors or what you are owed because of what your ancestors went through. Well, nigga, you could have tweeted that, right? No, I just had to say it. Not because I said it on the pod. I said it on the pod. They don't do that. Keep, keep, keep. Hey, Queen's Flip. Queen's Flip. Queen's Flip, bro. They told Flip. Uh, let me holler. Let me holler. Hold on, nigga. Hold on. They told him that for days. Hey, big dog. When it comes, it ain't coming your way. They got mad at us. There was a... Why, y'all? Yeah. Look. It was good. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah. I appreciate that, Flip, man. Definitely, man. So yeah, like you know, like I was saying. But that was man. you talking, Sonny, just now. Somebody nah, like, nah, 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 nah. That wasn't me. Nah, that wasn't me. Nah, that wasn't me. I don't know who that was, but yeah, my boy um, was it. My man, what's up, Sonny? Nah, I was. You know, I, I definitely appreciate that, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to. I had to do it because I saw how passionate everybody was about it. My people's calling me, Yo, Flip, what you doing? So I had to go up there and clear it up. I mean, it's easy for me to tweet it, but I wanted to give the same energy that I gave in in talking down on reparations. Just say, yo, we ain't getting it. Let it go. They playing with us. That's you know, that's what I said. So I wanted to go back up there and just say, yo, you know, I understand what you're saying. I did some research. I learned about the Homestead Act. I've been watching uh, these debates. And this shit is, I've been watching these debates. I did a video on my own YouTube, you know, acknowledging and, and understanding um, how insensitive my comments were. That was sweet. Yeah, definitely. And I appreciate that, man. Cause you know, like like you said, you gave it the same energy. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you didn't tweet it out. I'm glad you put oh, it out, you know, and people could see your, your facial expression and hear your, your tone and your voice and all that. So I I I, I mess with that, bro. And yeah, I, I yeah, you know, yeah, let me talk, man. I want to talk. Who that? Wheezy. Oh, oh Weezy, go ahead, bro. Oh, Weezy. Yeah, yo, what's going on? What's going on? I just want to say, man, like, yo, I agree with Queens Flip. Ain't we not getting no reparations over here? Oh shit! I'm oh, shit. talking about reparation this, reparation that. Ain't none of that shit happening. We won't even come together in our own community for little things. And y'all talking about reparations? Like, let's be for real, man. Like, this, this is just a conversation. Y'all just be on here chatting. I'll be listening. I'll be seeing the tweets, and I'll be seeing the all the rhetoric, and it's all chat, bro. Real talk, man. Yo, black hold on. Don't throw me in that, nigga. I got, I got a different. Yeah, thing. they about to cook. They about to cook. They about to cook. Small things, bro. Don't throw me in that, my nigga. Don't try to throw me like, like I'm no, not I'm down just with saying, you. I'm just, I'm just keeping. I'm in not the, down with that. that. I just did some research, man. I, nah, nah. I, I hear you. She talking about. I hear somebody talking about they be mobilizing and all this extra stuff. That's cat, bro. That's cat, bro. I don't see yo. I'm, I'm living in New York, bro. I don't see nothing happening in the city, man. I don't see. I just see straight drama. Weezy, Weezy. Let, let me say something to you, nephew. On, this is I'm an older cat. cat. I'm 50 cat. years old. I want to tell you something. We making shit happen, bro. Unbeknown to you, you must be trapped in. You must be trapped in them bricks up there. But you fail to realize Queen Yaya yeah. put together a reparation thing over 26 bro, states. He put together people in Chicago, New York. Florida and everybody, she made that shit happen because people came out for the same agenda. Reparations. Happening that. So if you're not down, if you're not down for that, 
You need to not look at that. And you need to pay attention and open your eyes and come up out them bricks and them shadows, bro, because it's a bigger world than New York. I'm in California, bro. I've been to reparations task force meetings. I stomped in the streets. I've been to the Capitol walking around talking about we need our reparations. So what you saying really don't mean nothing. You need to come up out, bro. We going to get it. I you know, know we get it from the, the federal the government, meeting. not from the state. Send me the next reparation you know? task force meeting. You can, no, you can come to D.C. No, you can come to D.C. April 15th. Yeah, April 15th in D.C., you can pull up. But it's hella insensitive yeah. for you to speak on some shit that you don't know about because you're showing your ignorance. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm talking. I'm being. I'm, I'm just a real dude. So I'm realistic, bro. Y'all chatting, bro. Like, I'm a real nigga. Hold on, hold on, I'm a real on, nigga, bro. People ain't coming together for nothing, bro. Let's keep it 100, say He's using reverse psychology. Right, come on, dude. Let's be real. Let's be real, bro. Y'all aren't going to do this for real. Oh, back I think he's trolling. He need thing, his bro. money. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. One hold thing. On. We don't come together for nothing. That's it. That's all I got to say. It's all right. Nah, you got to rebuke that. You got to rebuke that. It's all right. We need the door. We need the door. We come outside. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Yeah, let me... um. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me Weezy would <laughs> Yeah, let me let me let me unpack what, what Weezy was saying real quick. Um, you said we not gonna get reparations because we don't come together. Is that is that the main issue why you saying we not gonna get reparations? You at, you asked me a question about I ain't hear you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked you yeah. It, do you, you said we not gonna get reparations because we don't we not unified, we don't come together. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we don't come together for nothing. We is divided. What's the other reason? We that's the main reason, bro. That's the only reason. Division. Division. We divided in our family homes. This we nigga is probably not street. even black American. He's probably a divided in politics. This guy's in cosplaying as being black. Yeah, hold on, y'all. Like I don't believe he black American. I be let let Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Sonny, you got this I, shit. Lit Sonny, what the it, fuck happened? Hey man, that, that, this shit. That's what happened, this shit man. Get I like knew, this? It get little, it get like that sometime, man. I was trying to keep it from not getting like that. I'm I'm glad I, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, Flip. I'm glad I was the one who opened the space up because if somebody else would open the space up and had your name in the title, bro, it would have probably that shit would have been turned flipped up upside down, bro. I'm oh. I'm one of the I'm one of the more calmer heads. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy you did, man. I I wouldn't hate to come in on some ignorant shit, bro. That it would have been all nasty, man. Like. Like Weezy, Weezy, cool, but don't, don't, Weezy, don't, I'm not down with you, nigga. Like I just said, I'm gonna do some research. Don't try to wheel me back in. Try to wheel me back into that craziness. Like yo, I agree with Flip. Nah, you heard me. Like, listen, I'm learning and I'm still learning, Weezy. That's all. Uh, and I'm gonna come up with my own opinion after I, after I do all my research. Yeah, like like the, my man said, like if you feel like we not unified, Weezy, right? We got the joint on April the 15th, bro. That shit is free and open to the public at Washington, Washington D.C. and the Lincoln Memorial. So it's going to be people out there unified, you know, standing together. And it's been a, it's been a few different events just over the last year of people just standing outside for. This is what I want, uh, Flip, bro. I want people to have the same energy because I don't ever hear nobody. Like I said, I'm not. Listen, I'm not signed to Apple Music. I don't. I don't got. I'm not. I don't have no deals with no big figurehead, so I can say what I want to say. I just want people when they say this. And this don't this don't apply to you, Flip, because you already we already had the convo. You 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 know you retract it, and I, I fuck with you for that. But I want people to have the same energy towards the Jewish community, right? Who get reparations? Because people people really scared to step on that ledge and say that shit on and out and open in the camera because they know that shit come with ramifications. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they had talked to the Black American community, like you ain't finna get this, you ain't finna you you if you really gangster and you really street and all that shit you kicking, do that shit on your pot, do, do that shit on camera. Say say that the Jewish people they don't deserve reparations because they've been getting they've been getting broken chipped off for a little minute, you know what I'm saying? And and if we're gonna be a, a buck, the Holocaust was it was something that that was you know it was it was a nasty event, bro. But we talking about something that happened for 246 years, you know what I'm saying? Like of our own Holocaust, bro. And I need my bread. I need to, for the government to run me my shit back because I wouldn't let a nigga skate off in the streets on on some shit either. You know what I'm saying? So I, I need I need for my coins, I need all that shit to get ran back, bro. So I don't I feel you wheezy, but I, I, I really don't be hearing people have that same energy for, towards other groups who get reparations. You know what I'm saying? Like if 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 you're gonna keep it all the way a buck all the way through like that, then I mean salute to that, bro. But I don't there's people getting reparations right now. 
know what I'm saying? And, and people don't really have no issue with it. They just have an issue with black Americans demanding they own specific reparations, bro. That's that's what that's if I'm gonna keep it a band with you, that's really what I see. I don't, you know, niggas know they finna if they say some shit about somebody else, they finna get canceled. You finna nigga have to start all over. Fill out some don't be mad, UPS is hiring type shit. You know, so don't be nice to that bitch ass nigga. He probably not even black American. We hold on, Jake. Hold on, hold on, bro. I'm not hold hold on, bro. Hold hold on. I'm not. I'm not being nice to nobody, bro. I'm just, I'm, I was really having a diplomatic conversation with Flip and the shit kind of spun out. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm, I'm not being nice to nobody, bro. I, I, this is this is the way we could communicate and have a conversation and actually, you know, get people to, you know, understand our plight and educate them. Like Flip been in here, he, he been real solid. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't got no issue with that. He done, he learned. He don't, you know what I mean? He, he put the video out. I can't speak for o Weezy, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know whose man's that is. But I'm not being nice with him. I'm just I'm just saying, like, you know, I don't, I really don't, I, niggas really don't be testing their gangster when it comes to the Jewish community, bro, who still get reparations. That's all that I'm saying. If you really that gangster nigga, talk about the Jewish community and how they still get reparations and they get chipped off. I, you can't cancel me, my nigga. I, 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 <laughs> I'm a regular nigga down here in Orlando, Florida, bro. I got my own recording studio. I don't answer to nobody. That's all that I'm saying. Sonny, we love you. I want to say this, right? Um, far as it uh, um, concerned reparation, we don't need the 100% of the population. We just need critical mass. 10 to 15 percent if you look at the history of america and black americans fight fighting for our lineage it was only the lesser population that pushed it y'all hear somebody talking forward forward for the matter yeah, of our speaking. people so for Jake him talking, to come on here hold for him to come you, on here. hey jake, jake this, can you hear me hey, hey, jake can you hear me me Sonny can't Mike, hear man. you. Sonny no, can't hear no, you, Jake. No, Sonny no. can't hear you, Jake. I'm just trying to tell you. Sonny can't hear you. All right, but let me get this out. But for him to come on here and disrespect black Americans and what the fuck we fighting for, I don't believe this dude is from the lineage Oh, he trolled. He's all. a troll, Sonny. He's a troll. I don't think, think this dude from the lineage, and um, you wouldn't say that shit in real life. We fighting for our motherfucking lives, and we fighting for a debt that's owed to us. And I don't believe you from our lineage, so you need to shut your motherfucking mouth as you're opposed to um, reparations and what we owe. We built this country, and we've been fighting for everybody, but nobody ever come and get no skin in the game from the, as opposed to black American fighting. Y'all niggas always take the high road. Y'all ni niggas need to fall the fuck back because it could get real ugly on these streets. And y'all lucky, y'all y'all lucky that the masses of our people haven't woken up yet, because niggas like you would be getting your motherfucking ass whipped in the middle bro. of the fucking street. <laughs> Yo, it is no disrespect, bro, but it's niggas is not waking up, man. I'm trying. To, um, I I'm think just, can I can I have my place like, in here? not please? waking up, bro. For real, like I don't. I I, I hear you. Or you. Yo yo yo! Hey, shout out to the room. Uh, shout out to your uh, queens flip. Um, I'm not. I wasn't. I'm not privy to your. Um, yeah, salute to you though for coming in this motherfucker though. For real, for real on that. Uh, and, and coming speaking with the uh, black grassroots. But yeah, I'm not privy to the um flip the script podcast. But I am uh. You know, I am familiar with the Joe Budden podcast, and I watch y'all and, you know, do y'all shit on there. Um, for me, you heard a lot of the reparation shit and all of that. But for me, like, uh, it's two it's two conversations going on at once. You have the reparations topic, and you also have the delineation identity topic that, that needs to be really understood because that's why a lot of this shit get muddy, and you and it both it, and it get intertwined. Like, on the delineation side, understanding our identity and gatekeeping our culture that's very important right now and that's that's also being pushed heavy on the masses because uh uh one of the brothers said it in here about how um in Sunday even brought it up with black history month people trying to come over and erase that and not even just erase it right now when you look up black or look at black history month you see a lot of uh, infusion of african and caribbean shit that's never been the case throughout our history especially with me growing up i'm a millennial 
coming up in America. I when they talked about black history, I don't give a damn church school. It was always about US niggas. That's it. I've never seen nothing about Marcus Garvey, never seen nothing about Shirley Chisholm, none of these Caribbean people. There ain't no disrespect to them, but that was never the case. But now fast forward 2024, we seen Africans and Caribbeans all infused in our history. And that's a major problem. You get what I'm saying? While being flooded with immigrants. So that, that side of the conversation has to be addressed and it has to be understood. We talking about black people. When you speak on black people, you're talking about people that can trace their lineage back to US chattel slavery. That's documented on US census records, birth records, marriage licenses all, like all type of shit. we have those documents and we can go back down there to the late 1700s with that on our paperwork so that is a major part in this conversation that's where the delineation come in at. uh well somebody brought up the hip-hop shit with uh jamaicans and uh birthed in that it, that's all false and it, it's all documented we have all type of information on it so and that's very important right now so if you if you can't trace your lineage back to chattel slavery or free black on census records you're not a part of our ethnic group and there's no hate. It's nothing about being divisive or nothing like that. We just being specific with who we are because we need specific tangibles. And, that, and, and that's just where we at right now with uh, the black grassroots and how we moving forward. But uh, salute to you for coming in here, though. And look, I, I, I ain't got no problem with the Joe Budden uh, podcast. I fuck with it. Like I say, I watch out when I heard the reparation shit. I'm really not surprised. Um, a lot of people feel like that, especially people that's not of the lineage. So with uh, O'Weezy, uh, he's from Bronx, New York. I don't know if he's of the lineage. Cause a lot of people of the lineage come out and speak against it like that just jump off the skin you know what i'm saying we already got to deal with people in our own group but then we have a lot of outsiders coming in just giving their two cents like they qualified anyway so when you said it it didn't mean that to me because you're not even qualified so of course you're not getting it your people the Caribbean, they're not getting it because they don't even qualify so but when it comes to the identity and culture that has to be addressed because we did it with major erasure with us right now with a lot of shit on with our identity y'all need your own boxes in america you shouldn't be able to check black or african-american because that's basically identity theft. When you get into that, that's identity theft because we the only people that have those documents going back throughout this history in this country, being labeled as black or Negro. No other group in this, no other melanated immigrant has that documentation in this country. So that's what's going on right now as well. So y'all need your own boxes, Caribbean Americans, African Americans, and under that identify what nation, whatever, what country, like that's what it needs to be. Because there's been a lot of identity thieving going on, a lot of cosplaying and a lot of mixing up and a lot of just flat blackness. And, and we can't deal with that right now. It, it, it's, it, it's just too much right now. And so that's where the grassroots moving there. But salute you for coming in here, though. I don't know who is next, honey. Um, yeah, I'm back, man. I, I, got kicked, I got kicked out the space, man. Um, I'm going to go ahead because I, I, got, I got something to do um, within the next 15 minutes, man. So I, I definitely just want to get through the hands that's on the stage and um, we go ahead and wrap it up. And then look at this nigga. He's Caribbean. He got shit locks in his head. Our dreads is even different from these niggas. He don't even look like a black American. You, we could look at you and tell by how fucked up your dreads is that you're not even black American. And then you talk about me not getting reparations. You lost your motherfucking mind. Hey, um, yeah. Lou Fax. I don't know who next, bro. Yeah, what's up, bro? Can I get in queue? Yeah, yeah, you get in queue, Nat. And I'm I gotta close this thing down, man. I'm I'm past my time. Yeah. And Lou, don't you be long windy. No, I'm be quick. Hey, I just want to say this <laughs> to Queens, man. Hey, man. Hey, Queens, man. This shit like game banging, man. Hey, man. We crossed that line, man. You know, it's repercussions, man. This reparations game banging, man. You better, you better, hey, be careful, man. I just want to say that. But uh, I just want to say this though. Uh, all jokes aside. <laughs> you sound uh, crazy, nigga. Shut your ass up. Hey, I heard you that. Hey, no, nah, but look, it's it's 40 million black Americans, man. That's more people than the whole country of Canada, right? So uh, I look at it like this, man. When people go against, like, I fuck with all people socially, right? But when you go against my interests, right, you can be my best friend, you can be my brother, you can be my family, you can be from another country that I'm that I'm cool with, right? Uh, and then if I communicate with you, like, hey, listen, bro, you tripping, you're going against my bottom line, and then people continue to do it. Because I'm not really talking about people that just, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Queasy ain't got shit to lose. He probably in, in the projects fucked up, just mad at life, uh, hating, right? But people that got like a big platform and got like real, um, some type of social power, right? There needs to be consequences when people go against our interests, especially people that we, uh, our ancestors came over here and fought for, right? So if, if I, this is my, this is my thing, right? I'm not really arguing with people. They ain't really got no power to really uh, just just speaking against us, right? Because I can't really control just random people. 
but in terms of like people who who have who who uh because you you're in hip-hop this is something that black american created and for people to go against our interests, there needs to be consequences. And it's not personal. You're a businessman just like me, right? So uh, y'all seen what happened with the Target, right? When uh, Target started doing the trans shit and these white folks got mad and they and they, and they, and they affected their bottom line, I think there needs to be the same type of consequences, right? Like if people being willfully ignorant and you know the facts, because I'm pretty sure you don't know the facts. That's why you, you, you came in this conversation in good faith. But once black Americans wake up, and to, to this ethnogenesis that we're trying to create politically, all right, we need to start affecting people's bottom line, just like the Jewish community, right? Uh, Sonny brought that up earlier. When people go against their interests, right, they affect your bottom line. I, I seen some shit during the Palestine and Israel thing where it was uh, students, and this is my last point, I'm, I'm going to get about here. Uh, it, it, it was students uh, that was publicly uh, uh, calling Israel um, uh, 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 Hitler state or shit like that, right? And they found out where these people went to school at and went to and and actually uh where they was working at and they got them fired and affected their bottom line. So I feel like there there needs to be the same consequences because a lot of people think they can punch down black Americans, which I, I I don't really see this shit in person. I just I'm new to this shit to the internet. So I feel like, you know, the only thing is like is to affect people's bottom line, right? Uh boycott they uh stores, right? Uh boycott they 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 businesses. And then, because one thing that, that that people in America do respect is um uh, is money, right? So once you start affecting these motherfuckers' bottom line, man, especially people that we uh came that that came over here and 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 we fought for, then they are gonna get in line. You feel me? So all that talking and all that other shit don't really matter and shit. So I, I think that's that's what we need to uh that's how we need to come at this shit uh from from here on out. If people publicly speak against our our interests, uh, there needs to be uh economic consequences. Yeah, that's a fact. That's why I was saying the flip, you know, earlier, man, like, you know, um, cause it is, you know, it, it's still people that do speak down on reparations, man. Like, oh, y'all ain't finna get it. And that's a pipe dream and shit like that. But we see that the Jewish community, they, they did get reparations and they still receiving reparations. Don't nobody got no smoke for it. You know what I'm saying? And like, we looking at, like I said, man, I, 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 maybe I'm the only person who could speak on this in the space man but we're looking at the holocaust you know we could pretty much fit that in a, t a 10 year window even though it was fucked up it was a fucked up historical event i'm not taking none away from that right but we talking about something that's 200 we talking about something that, that's that times 10 nigga. you know what i'm saying like we, we talking about all type of wild shit that was happening on the plantations um uh i don't even know how many uh you know uh we talking about black wall streets we talking about over 300 cities and towns across the country that got burnt down, flooded out, you know, that black Americans was doing their own thing, you know, dominating communities that was thriving. If motherfuckers would have just left them shits alone. You know what I'm saying? Like if people would have left our, our towns and our, and our communities and our cities alone, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. You know, so, you know, and, um, and it shouldn't even be an act. It, it should be a demand. Like, like if you know the history, especially if you're a black immigrant, like and you and you migrated here, you descended of black immigrants, you know that black Americans fought for your, um, like, because I know a lot of people would be bringing a personal upbringing up, like you probably got called an African booty scratcher or or, or got picked on by black Americans, so people bring their childhood trauma to their adulthood, right? But just outside of your personal experience, whether it's negative or positive, with us, uh, our ancestors fought for y'all to come over here. So f for you to go against our interests. We need to go against yours. It just it's just simple as that. It's not no diaspora war. We don't hate nobody. We fuck with uh, all, all groups that fuck with us. But uh this is politics, man. This shit is uh this shit is war without blood shit, right? So when you publicly go against our interests, we need to publicly go against yours. It's it's not personal, just business. Yeah, you know, and the CARICOM CARICOM is an organization that's that's pretty much uh centering and gathering and you know, pretty much established for caribbean people uh you know across you know the islands and stuff like that for them to receive they specific reparations for them you know what i mean like you know and it don't have nothing to do with black americans i i would never you know throw you know throw some salt on their game because at the end of the day like i said when i first you know cranked the space up i believe that all melanated people across the globe deserve reparations bro due to colonization and shit like that yeah, you know I mean, so I, I never throw no salt in the game, bro. We all they all need to run and, and, and pay everybody back respectfully, it, it, you know, through their proper channels. 
you know, so that's that's the type of time we need to be on. And we need more people like, you know, like my man's flip, uh, like Joe Bun podcast, like different, you know, podcasts and different platforms to really, you know, talk about some real shit, man, because it's, it's some real shit. And it's a real pivotal year in 2024 with this 2024 election. You know what I mean? I think we could be able to mix the, the medicine in with the candy a little bit, bro. Like, we got to be able to do that um, because everything, like, it's, this shit this shit real critical, man. This, this, it's a real critical. Hey, sorry, I was talking to my African homie, right? And I was I was saying, what what would happen in uh, Nigeria if a Fulani, like, let's say America was to give resources to a specific tribe in Africa, right? And let's say um, in Nigeria, and they give it to a Fulani instead of an Igbo. It was supposed to go to an Igbo, right? It'll be a civil war, right? When people go, when, when 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 tribes go against other tribes' interests, there's literally wars being fought, right? So it's like, I know a lot of people feel like you know because Black America, we so uh, welcoming to all groups of people, right? It's, it's just in our culture, but uh, yeah, man, and 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 even for the people that uh, get on cold with us, right? We need to uh, you know support them and shit, get behind them and shit. So it's 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 as simple as that if you go against our shit we 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 ain't fucking with you and we're going against your interest if you fucking with us we're going to support what you got going on uh regardless if you african black american or caribbean man just it's as simple as that but yeah i'm, I'm done yeah i appreciate that lou bro i'm, I'm gonna get to the rest of the hands man because i i gotta wrap this up because i got something to do uh go ahead net we'll go to net and then miss d What's up, peace, sunny peace, will be peace to everybody in the room. I appreciate this was a great space. I just like to, uh, so I thought we were past the point of naysayers and explaining why it is we're owed reparations and why it is that we're going to get it. But this incident here proves that um, we're still at the beginning stage and we still got a long way to go. And I just like to say to those that have more confidence and those that is not coming together to um, make sure we get our reparative justice, you have more confidence in those people as opposed to those that's come to the stage and those that has demonstrated the work that we're doing. That says more about you than it does about us and, the, and our reparations claim. And then I also also ask and I advise that those that need to do research, don't do research from your immigrant background perspective. It's difficult because you don't have the black American consciousness, but when you're looking at shit that we're doing, look at it from a black American ethnic perspective because we're about that life. It's it really interesting when people migrate here and really diminish, dismiss, and disrespect all that we've done because they can't comprehend and conceive of it. And to come into a space or confident talking about what we ain't doing, we've been working as a collective since we've been here in this country and I collective advocacy is what got us here where we are and what's got hit you here where you are and everybody else in the globe because everybody views the view from an American lens and you can't view America without view, without viewing us. So stop with the bullshit. Again, we still at ground zero in terms of trying to educate people, but stop looking at it from your lens and your view where you haven't fought for anything and try to consider what black Americans have accomplished and our legacy when you're considering us. I'm done. Yeah, I appreciate that, Nat, man. Oh, easy, man. You done open up a whole new can of worms, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Like, you done got the shit done. fired and riled back up, nigga. Uh, go ahead, uh, Miss D. Hey, Sonny. Hey, Booby, and everybody on the panel. Uh, I wanted to address his little dusty ass when he say, <laughs> ain't no movement been going on. The Texas pull-ups, and Sonny, I know you and Booby don't even know this, but the Texas pull-ups was on this show called The Benny Show. You can look it up. I have the video. I happened to be strolling through Instagram one day, and I don't know how that came through my timeline. My timeline. But I said, that's fly, girl. So I clicked on to it. It was us in Austin for our Texas pull up. It's called the Benny show. And I can send you, if you, I, I think you follow me back, but I can send you the video. Also, we were in the Daily Mail. Since he's sitting up there talking about it was no movement and nothing happened. Was he in the Daily Mail? The Texas pull up was in the Daily Mail. Then I found it on a television show. It's called the Benny show, B-E-N-N-Y. So that, that bullshit he talking, I know he was a teller when he started talking, and that's the definition. <laughs> and that's the definition of a teller right there, right there talking about we. I said, why is he study saying we? You're not getting shit anyway. Go to your own country and get your stuff popping. 
Get your shit popping in your own country and don't worry about what's going on over here. See, that's that's the reason why we delineate and that's the reason why we can't get nothing going with these people because they don't get them fuckers in line. Even though old boy did did uh tell him don't put him in there. It's many more need to speak out and need to get them in line. Just like the guy Somali that be in here, he gets he gets them Africans in line. And I land my plane. And Sonny, see if you follow me back so I can send you the video. You are booby. Yeah, I, fo I follow you, Miss D. You can uh, definitely send it to my um my inbox. Um, okay. Definitely, man, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Weezy kicked the horn in this, bro. <laughs> this shit crazy, man. But uh, we're going to go ahead, go to uh, Straw Hat, CC, and then Sister Sean. Yeah, I'm going to be real quick. Now, I knew he was going to get cut as soon as he said it. But, um, you know, keeping my ear to the ground. You know, I've seen a lot of black Americans who kind of separate themselves from Tariq Nasheed, right? And I say that to say that the first time I heard Charleston White was on Flip the Script, and then you got people like Dr. Umar that's getting interviewed on Joe Biden podcast. As far as I know, this is such a serious matter, so y'all don't really want to like, I, I don't know how you view Tariq Nasheed, Sonny. I don't have no dog in that fight. But as far as just getting a message out to make more people aware, would it be a bad thing for him to get interviewed on these podcasts as far as just talking about FBA or that's one of those things where y'all like, nah, we ain't fucking with that. Like who would be somebody as far as the media, not on like trying to be a clown or, or make a joke of the matter, but at least somebody who has the type of platform just to have a conversation or to get interviewed to make people more well. Cause I think that's the only thing that's missing. Or I don't know if you know any celebrities who, who really, uh, saying it cause I know it's not just about, you know, uh, you know, not taking this shit serious, but I think when you got the Pan Africans, you got the other people that's getting on these platforms. It's like we don't have the y'all don't have a fair representation in these different hip hop platforms. People, you know, for the younger that's doing the same thing in y'all case. Most people that learn about this shit be on the app. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, y'all doing stuff uh, legislation, so that's not stuff that get recorded. So I just want to know, Sonny, or would you have a problem with that type of representation as far as just Tariq Nasheed go? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, he is talking about it, whether people like him or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, bring I mean, bring whoever people feel is, you know, they deem worthy to whoever got the message, man. You know, it got the message. You know, um, that's that's who that's what I would advise. Whoever got the message, whoever got the talking points. That's who need to be on 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 this, you know, on the space or on a podcast or on the show. Yeah, you know I mean, like you know, uh, I would, I would definitely, I know, you know, he he an elder now, he up there, but Dr. Claude Anderson, that's, I mean, he the godfather of this shit. So, you know, um, that's that's somebody, you know, they could swing through. It's a lot of people in in this space right now. Some people that's on the stage, you know, that they could they could uh, have pull up, you know, and you know, use the talking points and stuff like that. But we do have to have like, you know, that type of represent. Listen, man, like, it, it can't just be. It, the, the, it got to be space and room for the black intellectual. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, like, that, that's it, what it, I was it, saying. It, it, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Because I think that's where the separation came. Because I heard a lot of like, like, nah, Tariq Nasheed ain't our leader, da 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 And I'm like, so I get where they're coming from because you could be making a mockery of what you're pushing. But at the same time, as far as somebody with a platform just to represent and say, I'm a black American, I'm not this and that. Would it be a bad idea just to be the person with the platform to go on to flip the script or uh, Joe Biden podcast to have it? Because you know what I'm saying? Because he do have a background in the media. So, but I get what you're saying. But that's what I'm saying. It's like a picking up a lesser two evil type situation. Yeah, it gotta be it gotta be space for the black intellectual man because that conversation. Listen, uh, ninety percent of our diet through through media, right, is 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 bullshit and entertainment. We just gotta call it. You know how what it is, bro. It's, it's bullshit and entertainment. It's degeneracy. It's ratchet. It's turned up. It's a whole bunch of you know bullshit, right? We not getting the proper, you know, it's, it's fast food, and the black, you know, the we got real shit that we need to address in the black community. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's like some real legit shit, and it's some real people, you know, who really out here putting in in the groundwork. So whoever they feel like, you know, they deem worthy. You know, then bring them up, man. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, bring them up. Yeah. You know, sign some like. What's good, Flip? You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. My fault. Uh, yeah, I, I've been listening in and out. Um, I, I have to go. Um, I, I didn't hear from. But did Sister Sean speak yet? I'm ready. I'm right here. I'm next though, but I'm next, and I've been waiting. And I'm. Who? Who? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who said they? 
Connie, Cece, Cece. Cece, come on, girl. You've been speaking all day. I have been in the audience. What are you talking about? I just came up. Other Cece. people have spoken 10 times. May I just go ahead and speak and be done? No, 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 Miss Cece. I heard you a couple of times. I would like to hear from somebody else. Sister Sean already spoke. She did? Yes. I Yes, wow. may I speak? No, no, go ahead, go, go ahead and give this. Thank <laughs> you. I, I, I spoke one time. Yeah. I just had two Yeah, thank points. you, Sean. So I just want yeah, to go ahead this. and give her the grace. I have two more points. It won't take My points are very today. brief. Yeah, so oh, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, CC. We not yeah, going thank you, Sean. Ahead. We don't know each other, uh, Queens. So anyway, real quick, I just want everybody in the space to remember, particularly Queens. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X were viewed the same way that we're being viewed. The majority of black Americans weren't behind them. They didn't support them. I'm not gonna get into that. But also remember that the United States government assassinated every credible leader that we have. And that's what they've done. And now we have a bunch of sellouts and a bunch of melanated immigrants speaking for us that don't have our best interest at heart. And the second thing is to Lou's point, um, Lou, we, we, have, we do get people fired. We've gotten lots of people fired people that are speaking against us and harming us, we they've been fired. The last thing is that people are saying they don't see us out in the streets. We I've been at this for over seven years. Uh, people like me have had uh, death threats, have had the police come to my house with guns and helicopters and all of that. We are doing the work. And to prove it, that's why Harvard is giving reparations to the descendants of American chattel slavery. That's why the Protestant church is giving reparations to the descendants of American chattel slavery. That's why the state of California has delineated to help us to get our reparations. So having said that, um, back to you Queens and to what Sonny and other people were just saying, there are some of us that have been at this work. I spoke in front of 5,000 people in Washington DC in 2022 at the reparations rally that Tariq Nasheed put on. And you know what happened? The news media shut us out. The news media blacked us out because they don't want the world to know that we're intelligent, we're great, we are articulate, and we're beautiful. So we are doing the work. It's happening all around the nation. So that's all I wanted to say. So again, thank you guys for letting me grace your stage. Okay, this is Sister Sean. Everybody wants to leave. Let me just jump right in. I'm gonna be quick with the flip. Here's one thing, it's not just for you to flip. I, 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 I failed to mind my Negro business and what I call my Freedman business. But here's a general thing that I want to put out to our people. When it comes to this Holocaust with the Jews, a lot of people don't know this. I'm in out of Washington, D.C. In the United States Holocaust Museum, there is a section for the Blacks who were interned in concentration camps in World War II. So don't let them get away with not talking about and paying homage to our black freedmen who were a part of the Holocaust. We were literally in concentration camps as well. They sterilized us, they incarcerated us, and they murdered us. We weren't in high numbers in Germany. See, we weren't in as high numbers as the Jews. So let's ask ourselves a question when are the reparations are going to be paid for the black Jews that were also interned in concentration camps? See, this is why we have to understand our history, y'all. So don't let no, no white folk, no Jew, no nobody, nobody when it comes to our people. Not only have we fought in every single war, but we were also in the concentration camps, y'all. Nobody wants to talk about that. So back to the flip with the quick, uh, flip out a, a flip. I'm talking directly to you, respect, brother. I forgot my Negro business. I would like you to um, support New Negro with his April 15th rally for reparations, which I totally respect is not gang banging. Everybody is included to come and speak and give their aspirations to come outside. Everybody want to come outside. So he has given that platform that is historical because it is in front of the Lincoln Memorial. And that's New Negro. Go to his page, retweet. That would be solidarity. Why don't you start off with retweeting his reparations rally? Let me tell you why I'm aligning myself with him. He also has a website called the New Negro Republic.org. He is formulating something called an ANDL. That means the Anti Negro Defamation League. That is an equivalent to 
ADL. That's what the Jews use. Anti-Defamation League. This is a critical component to having an advocacy for anti-Negro. Here's why. If you look at the AAPI, we all know on the federal statistics, nothing supported them getting an anti-Black, uh, uh, anti-Asian uh, uh, crime bill. What they used was they used private organizations and NGOs, and they used their statistics versus legitimate federal statistics. That's how they were able to push that through. That's why we needed ANDL. That's why I'm supporting New Negro Republic, because it is a correlation, a direct correlation for us getting an anti-Black crime bill. We have no uh, 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 organization's advocacy for us. So, so quick, I want you to do pencils up. I say pencils up. Put that in your mind. Jot it down. Do a bullet point. On the freedman side, my freedman business, uh, for immigrants, and it's not just for Africans and Caribbeans, it's all immigrants. They have a whole machine called the Office of New Americas advocating for their communities, for li their livelihoods, for their future, and we have nothing. That's why we are also advocating for a freedman's bureau. That is a, a protected class freedmen's bureau for us we are the only ones that deserve to have a protective class but we don't have it they are protecting via the office of new americas and we don't have nothing so we need a freedmen's bureau with a legal arm to lobby for us politically and legally and for our protections, which is back to New Negro. The ANDL is the one that's going to be handling our protections. Trust me, we got many fights to front. There's many fronts to fight. That's why we need the Freedmen's Bureau that will, we will uh, encapsulate and put it all at one force and we will fight from one from one organization or one uh, business model, if you will. So the Asians already used it. It wasn't even real statistics and they got the goddamn bill uh, done. So these are the kind of things that I would love you, um, Flip, um, to, to, to really, once you get your um, study on and your scholarship on, to really understand and to promote. Because if we don't get our own organizations, our organizations are diluted, okay? There's a whole entire machine working against us from immigrants. It's not just Caribbean. We need the other Caribbean and the Africans to understand if you are talking against what we're doing, you don't understand that you are contributing to the problem problem you are contributing to the machine so that's part of my um that's part of my negro business that i need to deal with in my freedman business my freedman uh, business is the a my freedman business is the freedman bureau it's a very y'all hear me Yo, 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 all I right, can hear you, right. brother. Yeah, Steven, I see Steven up here. I don't know if Steven trying to... Yeah, yeah, I, I, got, I got I got, it. I got a session wrap. at 3 p.m. where I got to go downstairs and get, and get the client. Hey, Steven, hey, hey. hey. my man. I, I, think, uh, I think I accidentally requested by... All right, cool. All right, uh, Soul Food, did you have something to say, bro? Soul Food, uh, uh, Wounded, uh, Hiller? Hey, real quick, I, I'm new to all of this. I just wanted to know where I could start. That's all I want to know. What you mean? What do you mean, stuff? Like, as far as the research. I mean, uh... I know for a fact I'm got no Caribbean. Where do I start? You start, what, what you said, start where? Like, you mean as far with the reparation fight? To learn, to, to learn about the FBA, period. I'm, just, I'm new to all of this. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say like it's a place to start. If you if you black American and you for uh, reparations, man. I mean, you know, study Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, you know, uh, tap into uh, you know any books other than Dr. Claude Anderson or like Tariq Nasheed. Is there any websites y'all suggest? Anything for me to get? 
I mean, if you got <clears throat> if you got any elders as well, I mean, your forefathers, elders, grandparents. I mean, they 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 are walking libraries. You know what I'm saying? Like your lineage. That's what that's that's the foundation of this shit. Uh, tracing your lineage and making sure you actually qualify for what's going on uh, with us in America. So I'm gonna say this. Is, you know I'm, I'm gonna say, say, this, I'm gonna say this as a young nigga, right? All y'all older, and most of us don't have connections to those things y'all are telling us to do. So um, great thing that y'all did today, but I would say give us something to go to to start us off, whether it be some type of statistics or a person to look at, which Dr. Carl Anderson, I definitely will check out. Yeah, definitely. And I know my brother, New Negro, on here. I, I, I'm going to be honest, bro. So I'm, I, I am, I'm, I'm kind of like on the move, man. So my, my brain kind of scrambled. But um, if, if, if somebody could throw that up in the jumble trying to fly it for the... Um, you know, for for the for the event on the 15th, because he, he has a, a website I know attached to it, man. So you could definitely, you know, do some information in that, man. I mean, and, um, you know, it's it's definitely like a lot of different reparations movements going on, man. So definitely, you know, tap, yeah. you know, tap into them, man. Um, go ahead. Hey, so fool, you got you there, bro. Yeah, what up, man? I just want to say uh, salute to you, Sonny, Booby, Queens Flip. Uh, doing a great job today, man. Salute. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I got to go. Um, shout out to everybody that was in here, man. I thank you for the knowledge. I'm going to do some research. I did reach out to, to a lot of people behind the scenes in the DM. A lot of these, uh, uh, just a lot of uh, co-founders and founders of organizations that I just want to find information about. Um, thank you, though. Thank you for, for hosting this live, Sonny and Booby. Uh, and uh, I salute. Shout out to everyone that spoke. Shout out to DW. She was breathing heavy. Shout out to CC. CC was like straight to the point. She didn't hold no punches, but I'll fry her ass up if it was another live. Um, shout out to the sister earlier. Shout out to the brothers, man. All jokes aside, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for taking the time to educate me. And suddenly I appreciate you. And you all have a wonderful day. Um, I may talk shit still. And I would like for you guys to hold me up by my collar, but I'm I, I am going out there to learn for real. All jokes aside, and I'm not I'm taking this serious because I do want to know to be able to uh, come up with my own opinion, um, and yeah, in theory. And I'm I'm gonna look in the Caribbean Caribbean Con Caribbean Con. I don't know what the hell that is. That sounds like some Comic Con stuff, and I had to look into that. And uh, I didn't even know what that was. I googled that shit, and that's I didn't say shit. I googled it and find out it's really an organization so i'm gonna look into that and i just learned a lot today and um you know i want to say salute to everybody and you know anybody if you're going to post anything of me talking about reparations please post the episode on a joe button podcast where i went and i apologize um uh the time frame the time is at uh I said it on the pod. I said it on the pod. Or what you are old because I feel how I feel, but I acknowledge the people. I, I that's just how I feel. Hold and on. I did some research. You ain't fried them up. No, no. Give me a second. <laughs> Another podcast. Twenty four, twenty four, an uh, hour and twenty four minutes and fifty six seconds. Please be fair enough to post that. Do not just post something. Something you know. Do not just post what I said, but also post my apology. Or uh, my acknowledgement for being inconsiderate, and you know, what I mean, don't just post one shit, post the second shit. All right, so salute to everybody. Thank you, man. I I see you guys soon. Hopefully, we can have another one of these, and I have to go. Definitely, flip. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you for um, Thank you me. know, stepping into the lions den. But like I said, bro, that 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 take a lot of you know, it, that, that's some man shit. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I, I appreciate that, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm raising I'm raising young children, man. I gotta show them that you gotta you know you gotta be honorable. Definitely, and and we could really make a, a power statement, you know, with, with people with platforms, you know, like the Joe Bun podcast and, and connecting, you know, with people with the grassroots, you know, standing on this this message. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I I really wanted this to be a, a space where niggas kind of bridge the gap. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, I, I appreciate you for you know stopping into the space, bro. I know you're a busy man. Yeah. You know I me mean? like myself, man. So I, I definitely salute that, bro. So if you no any, anytime you in Orlando, tap in with me. I got the uh, recording studio here on the fourth floor on Orange okay. Central. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We got the whole suite. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm, so, in, I'm in I'm in I'm in Orlando a lot. My grandfather lives out there. I'm in Orlando a lot. Okay, pull. I mean, pull up then. We had a conversation. You know, we I I stay I show you around the city. Say no more. 
All right, bro. Yo, bless y'all. Thank you, bro. All right, Sunny, peace, I bro. You. Thank you. It's, it's Sunny. I can't get into your DMs. Damn, I don't know what's going on, Miss D. I'm following you. That shit crazy, but uh, send, send it to send it to Booby. I, I don't. You, I, you gotta. I think you gotta accept me because it's a pending. What? I already follow you. Yeah, I'm, I'm following you. It's a pending. Go ahead, uh, Juice. What's good, bro? Yeah, yeah. What's good, bro? Hey, uh, man. Shout out to y'all, bro. Like that. That was a master class for real. Like everybody on. Uh, yeah, we need shit like that. Like niggas like Queens Flip, you know, he he part of a big platform, and you know, taking the time out to just hash that shit out is like real dope, bro. So I, I just came up to salute the space. This was a, like a real, real good space, bro. Hey, man, ever since y'all came back, y'all y'all niggas been a hundred, bro. It's been back to back to back to back weekends of this this good content. So yeah, man, shout out to the tribe, bro. Definitely, man. Shout out to the dead bodies, man. Um, yeah, shout out to the dead bodies. <laughs> what's, hey, what's, hey, what's good, hey, LTC? Hey, Sonny, I'm stepping in for Queen's Flip, so all, all questions can be directed to me. All right, I'm going to throw you the co-host. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> nigga, LTC, crazy. But n go ahead, uh, 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 talent, bro. If you got to throw your joint up in a, in a you know, in a, um, I, I'm trying to find it, bro. Throw your joint up in the, uh, the Jumbo Tron real quick before we close out, you know, that way, or give people the information about what's going on. Uh, April the 15th. Oh, man. Well, thanks for the platform. Man. And first and foremost, shout out to you. You know, that gatekeeping the coach is something that you always stand on. So when you see things that are out of cultural alignment, you know, we need our brothers to be our ancestors to be out there and make sure they correct it. And it definitely was a master class of how to hold the room with the quorum, how to not turn it into a diaspora war, but turn it into a moment where people who are not of the lineage can learn how serious and passionate we are about. So they ain't got no excuses but to, you know, line up with the things that we're saying because we did it with love, we did it with respect, and we did it dead ass about our people and our business. So uh, April 15th, we're going to be at D.C. Uh, by the Reflective Pool at the Lincoln Memorial for the reparations demonstration. Uh, we are asking for all people who want to speak. We have a stage up there for seven hours, 10-minute speeches, 15, 20 Come with your I have a dream and or your declaration of, you know, what you feel you need us to do or you would like the lineage to stand on for individuals that can't make it. Use that as a day to record some type of uh, uh, message and we'll be able to post those things and get those things online. But for anybody that can make it out there, Washington, D.C., April 15th is the date. And we chose that day because it's tax day, but it's also the date Abraham Lincoln was assassinated specifically uh, and the, due to his assassination is when we see the rescinding of Special Field Order 15 and we see uh, Andrew Johnson come in with the Confederate energy and begin to weaponize uh, the Confederates against us in our uh, do harm. I mean, I would do uh, healing. So anybody that can make it, reach out to me. Uh, information is on the flyer and we are looking for people that want to come out, man. Volunteers, guest speakers, you know, anybody want to come volunteer, contribute, you know, pull up. Peace and love. Thank you for that. Yeah, definitely, man. That's that's what that's about. You know what I mean? So, um, and we and we gonna be talking. We got a space with News Tota tomorrow that we're gonna get a little bit more into it. So, uh, pull up to News Tota space tomorrow as well. Tomorrow evening. Definitely, man. Definitely. And I sent it to everybody. You know who been um, that I that I could. You know to be standing on reparations. You know pushing the the message forward. So definitely, y'all heard it. April the fifteenth. That's going to be the next uh, reparations demonstration out there in Washington, D.C. Free event thrown on by my brother Talent. Listen, man, it got to be about the message and it got to be about the mission. And that's reparations, bro, for, for the descendants. It can't be uh, what hashtag is doing this and doing that. Like, we, we really got to show up and show out 2024, man. It, it don't make no sense that, you know, uh, nobody really getting galvan, you know, galvanizing behind the brother Talent, bro. Like, listen. All we got to do is agree on a mission. Do you, you agree that we deserve reparations, direct cash payments? Okay, cool. Come meet up with me in Washington, D.C., bro. I don't give a fuck if you ADOS, FBA, free. I don't give a fuck about none of that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, at all the, I'm at all these shits this year. Like I said, I'm going to pull up to the ADOS joint um, in uh, damn it, October in New Orleans. <laughs> Chop it up, you vet. Hopefully I get to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and she can unblock me. But we, we got to be on that type of time this year, man. It can't be about 
you know, because the shit was beautiful last year. Everybody had their own individual rallies and pull-ups and shit like that. But it really got to be a statement made this year in 2024, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it got to be a statement made. You know, so, you know, get up off that, the, the bullshit. We done with that shit in 2024. And shout out to Flip uh, for and pulling we, and up. And we also turn it into a lobby day as well. It is a weekday, so we made sure that it was a weekday. So while we out there, we not just, quote, marching like people always want to criticize. So it is a demonstration that is a lobby day. So people can pull up on their state reps with their demands. So when we have the room tomorrow, we're going to be specifically talking about how to make the request to your local state reps. So when you're out there in D.C., you can lobby within your uh, locale to make sure that that also happens. So you're not just on, you know, so you're not just a part of one part of it, but you're also a part of the other, which is the demand. You know, so the demand part is important for make sure that we're not just on stage, but when we're off stage, we could pull up in certain offices and, and let them know that we're here and we got some some demands. Definitely. And, you know, we got to be pulling up, you know, like I talked to talent, we got to be pulling up on Howard, too. You know, we got to be pulling up on Howard. I'm going to be coming out there with some extra black American heritage flags. I'm going to have like six or seven of them. Hopefully I can run into some black American uh, Howard students because we see that they got the African takeover there. We got to really draw that shit up in our people's chest. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know, this, we black American. We, we need a black American takeover day or black American, you know, rec, you know, reclamation day, whatever, whatever we, you know, we decide to do. That's what it's about, man. So that's all I'm on. Shout out to Flip, man, for pulling up because we need to be having them conversations where we bridge everything, not a rundown. You just got to really, you know, you know, walk with a nigga, have conversations with them, give them the information and the knowledge, especially if they pull up, you know what I mean? Uh, trying to, you know, receive that. You know, so that's I'm, I'm glad that he put up and had that conversation, man. So that's that's really what what type of time we need to be on. Go ahead, Shaw. Yeah, man, I appreciate your spirit in which you're 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 saying what you're talking about right now. That's a good thing. A little bit heart heavy, but um, uh, talent. Uh, congratulations to you, brother, with what you're doing. You're actually in the community. You're working with the youth. You're not just talking. You're out there. So my heart, my head, my heart's out to you, man. And uh, it reminds me when I was young, your age, I was doing the same thing. And uh, when I was also young, I want to remind y'all that uh, there were several big uh, conferences. And I think it was based on, you know, Afrocentric conference, whoever was speaking. And then uh, Republic of New Africa came up and talked about reparations and um then it was another conference this was when i was young so this conversation about reparations as you all know it has a history and even though uh it's bigger now it's more you know energy behind it it's more people that know about it at that time the group of people the circle of people were the afrocentrists uh some of which were nationalists some were pan-africanists some were all of the above and didn't really identify with any of that just was about building in a community like what i'm hearing sunny talking about building in the community, but know that there was efforts, whatever we could do at that time, if it was sign a, a, a petition, that's what it was, that's what we did. And if they had called us to do stuff, that core of people would have been about doing it. We would have been about it because we were in the communities, we were doing shit, thought we could save the world, doing shit like what talent's doing. This is a, a lot of us, and guess what? I gotta criticize my peers. Probably a lot of y'all's mamas and daddies who was not interested in that black movement, black stuff and Afrocentric, you, oh, you one of them Afrocentric. Those are my friends that I grew up with that was black Americans. When when we was talking about African-Americans before Jesse Jackson said something, they was like, nah, no, nah, I'm not no African-American. I don't have nothing to do with African. And 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 I think that the, a lot of those people are your mamas and daddies uh, and, and y'all have a certain feeling about it because that's what y'all learned at home. So all I can say is, uh, we gave our lives to the community to make it better. We made mistakes. We did some right things. Um, but when I hear the revision of the history in all kinds of ways, it's like motherfuckers is making up a whole new history. And they don't, they, they don't have a clue because the people that are, that are my age are not really in this room representing a lot. You know, it's, it's a few of us that come through and many of, of them were black Americans that didn't want to be African Americans and wasn't about the Afrocentrism many of them that, that are my age so i'm here to represent and let's just let y'all know that uh do do whatever you do do something positive in the community and i i'm at that point now with just do something other than talk yeah i i feel that you know this is what i say to this shot and then I, I get to my cousin bear arms and i 
I really got to wrap this joint up. Um, hold on, I, I see check finna come up. I'm, and I really got to wrap this joint up, right? You know, for me personally, um, I kind of, I don't, I didn't, I, I kind of want to say I, I kind of grew up, you know, Afrocentric. Um, I was in a program called UMA, um, in Columbus, Ohio, right? And I was like a, 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 a excellent student, right? I got trophies. I still got trophies and shit at my mama crib. You know what I mean? Like, you know, from, from being the best student, uh, being the most improved student and shit like that. So I learned about a lot of these uh, Afrocentric or Pan-African teachers. That I, so, I mean, for, for me having this conversation, it, it kind of, it, it's, it's kind of different, right? Because I know about the Dr. John Henry Clarks, the Dr. Benz. I studied uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams, the Dr. John G. Jacksons, the Dr. Amos Wilsons. Like, I, I really I really studied in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I really wanted to get into my, my Pan-African bag, right? But I think that right now, the, the time that we in, like we're being more linear specific, I think that that's really called for because we kind of passed that era now of being Afrocentric and Pan-African, especially when we include in this reparations fight. And it, we seeing how people are, are attacking the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like where everything, this is, this is one thing that I don't like. Everything about our culture gets rooted down or brought back to Africa, whether that be 4,000, 5,000 years ago. And that's that's something that I, I didn't even like growing up, you know, in, in the Afrocentric environment because it make it seem like Black Americans don't got their own culture. But everybody else had their own culture. Like, and don't nobody step on nobody's toes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we can't have our own culture for nothing, bro. Like, if we try to celebrate our culture and some shit like that, well, motherfucker be like, man, you know what? 4,000 years ago, that shit was written in, in the Sphinx with some hieroglyphics and like, I'm like, damn, bro, but they don't really do that with nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, when I go to other people's, you know, when I'm celebrating other people's culture, bro, I just celebrate it. When I celebrate or, or you know what I'm saying? If I go to a Jamaican restaurant or, or somebody outside of the, you know, outside of the lineage, bro, I, I just fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like if, if we, like, it's my, my homeboy, right? He in the other room. Y'all know I'm at the studio. That nigga Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? And we have these conversations all the time, bro. Like when I when I when I'm celebrating or I'm indulging in the Jamaican culture, like for for example, bro, I, I like the set We get a phone call. Probably got a phone call. Man, if you had been my student, you would have knew your African American history and been proud of it, and known that we are our own ethnic group. Did, did niggas stop talking, or is my our phone? Our own history probably got us something. I'm happen. gonna drop down. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, I'm. No, had, yeah, I'm fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault. My fault. This whole bell arms and shit. Yo, yo, what's going on? Peace, Booby. Uh, peace, uh, uh <clears throat> my family, Sunny. Um, man, shit. I'm, uh, <laughs> I've been, uh, MIA. I'm I actually just, fr I just got back to the United States. Shit. Last, I got back to the States last night. I was out in, uh, Belize. I was in Honduras. Um, you know, just, I was like, you know, down in Panama, like I was down there just kind of doing some traveling and shit. Like, it's funny that Sonny said that. Cause I was actually like, you know, appreciating their culture while I was there. And, uh, a lot of that black indigenous shit y'all be talking about is like heavy down there too. That's a whole nother subject. But, um, <clears throat> Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, like, um, I just wanted to get props to Sonny. Like this is the, uh, a master class uh, with this space. It's a, a good representation of like, you know, uh, how I think, um, you know, uh, things should be ran. Like, you know, if your kids was to like go back and, you know, 10, 15 years from now and look at a space, like this is the way you would want to, I was about to pull it out. Oh, yeah, but if your kids or if you're, you know what I'm saying, your your family, your grandmother, whoever was to go back and like, you know, you was to tell her about, you know, your, <clears throat> your liberation. Bad. I got, I got alarms and shit going off, but yeah, anyway, that like, that's what the, like, that's, that's the type of decorum and stuff that, that you would want them to see, you know what I'm saying? In, in my opinion, like, I think that that, like, that's a good representation and like, and, and it went, and it could have went totally left. It could have went completely left, you know what I'm saying? So. I just thought that like Sonny did a great job of handling himself in that space. And, uh, you know, shout out to Queens Flip too, because 
because uh you know queens flip like you know it, it take a for him to like sit there like it, that 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 could that could go a long way because i think that more people should like you know especially uh people that are immigrants and stuff like they need like for him like he really like put his ego to the side it just kind of said a lot about his character for him to sit through that and just to kind of like you know take everybody all the information i mean it's the, the jury's still out because we still got to see what the what his sentiment is going to be you know weeks from now or whatever once he starts gathering information from other places and stuff like that but uh i just thought that it was like the room was like really re well ran and I think that ultimately, like it had a good, there was going to be a good outcome. There had, there's the potential for a really, a really good outcome anyway. So uh, that's all. Uh, peace to the room. Yeah, my bad. I, I heard you. I heard you, uh, Cush. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's. I'm, I'm. Yeah, definitely, man. It was definitely a great build, great dialogue. What I was saying, you know, for my, before I got, I, I cut out was, you know, um, everybody has they own autonomy when it comes to their culture except for black americans you know what i'm saying like it can never just be our culture specifically it always got to have roots to somewhere outside of here you know what i'm saying and like we can never just get the full uh claimage you know what i'm saying of our own culture like bro black americans have their own culture we have the the most you know copied and duplicated culture across the world you know what i'm saying and like we deserve that that autonomy and that respect you know what I mean? Like it don't, you know, we we it's it's cool to say that. And it is, you know, we, we just at that time period right now, Shaw, where we just that's where we at right now. You know what I mean? If you're a Pan African and you and you agree to lineage based rep if you if you agree like reparation should be lineage based and it should go to a specific set of people, then that, that's cool. Like I ain't, you know, your ideology is your ideology, bro. I'm not I'm not here to convince nobody to have a, a, a difference of ideologies. You know what I'm saying? We just gotta get some uh, some straightening when it comes to this conversation you know what i mean when it comes to reparations and the culture because they both happen you know simultaneously but uh right. go ahead go ahead Sean. let me let me just say this little last 20 10 seconds is that uh we have different kinds of uh I'm, i've learned this in the last two years some of us have more uh connection with our uh aboriginal or indigenous others of us uh connect our history not only to the americas but also to africa so I connect to Africa, and even if you don't, and many of us don't, then I, I'm getting it. It's kind of weird to me, but because of um, just how we live and survive and, you know, what we do, you know, our art, our music, everything, there's a connection to me. But others of us feel that there isn't a connection to Africa, and that's maybe the problem. And what I've been hearing that's different that I've ever heard in the fucking 30, 40 years that I've been learning about this shit. I land right there. Thank you. Yeah, and that, that ain't nothing wrong with that. And it, and if you do have a connection with it, that ain't nothing wrong with that either. We got to learn how to compartmentalize a lot when we having these conversations on Twitter, bro. Like if if you feel like, you know, as a black American, you, you got a connection and you feel at home and you feel, you know, connect more connected to your African roots, then that's that's what's up, bro. I don't think nobody should be able to change that. And if there's people feel more connected today, see, we, we kind of get stuck on this hamster wheel on Twitter, bro, like where it's been like this for like the past two to three years where we just don't respect each other and in our own separate connections throughout that we find in our lineage and it has to be respect you know what i'm saying like you can't force nobody to connect with nothing that they don't want to connect to so long as on nobody step on your toes shy you don't step on nobody else's toes and that, that's how it should be you know what i'm saying whatever you got in your lineage is what you got in your lineage you know what i mean and if you respected that you know what i'm saying and to make you a better black man when you wake up and I mean, respect to that, bro. I don't, you know. Go ahead, Chuck. Yo, peace, peace. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. All right. Shout out to y'all for the space. I think it was a pretty phenomenal space. I came in at the tail end. I ain't really been on Twitter for the last week, but to my, come on. All right, appreciate you, appreciate you. God damn. My bad, somebody was turning. All right, so as far as the conversation goes, um, I kind of hate when we get so tribal where we're fighting each other. What connects us in this room is being American. You feel me? I don't give a fuck what niggas identify as. Negro, freedman, Indian, black American, American, color. It doesn't really matter to me because this landmass is what connects us. So different people have different lineages uh, depending on where your family was at and what your lineage is. Some people may identify more with their Latino culture. Some may identify with Africa. Some may identify with America. Some may identify with their European admixtures. Everybody doesn't have the same admixture. I do not like when we act as if 
we are all uniformly the same person. You feel me? Black Americans are different ethnic groups. It's, you feel me? It's an amalgamation of different ethnic groups that are from here. So I, I agree with that, Sonny. You feel me? Niggas can respect other people and not step on their toes and try to make them be something that they want them to be. Then I feel like these type of conversations will be a little bit more productive. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. And if if you don't like something that's being said, you feel me? Intellectually challenge that. Don't get up on our high horse and then start negatively talking shit about people who share lineage to this land. And that's how that's what we're standing on. So, um, uh, Shy, as far as you, I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say, it. I, at first I didn't like you, but right now I, I've grown to have more respect for you. You, you practice African spirituality m more than most Africans I know. And that's a fact, you feel me? Being in your spaces, I've learned about Ifa and all the, uh, the African deities and all that other shit. When I say, I ain't gonna say other shit, my bad. So I feel like it's something to learn from everybody when we have these type of conversations. But yeah, what connects us is this landmass. I'm not gonna lie. Everybody don't have the same lineage. So I really hate in one breath, niggas will say, speak about your own family, speak about your own region. Then in, then in the next breath, niggas from different regions and different families are speaking on our families. That's not respectful. It's not gonna lead to no productive conversation and it's actually gonna lead to fighting. So I don't give a damn one last time what niggas identify as. Everybody in this room is American. Well, not everybody. Majority of us is American, and that's and that's what we should be united on. I'm gonna land my plan right there. Appreciate y'all. Definitely, man. That's all it's about. Respect, man. As long as there's respect there, that's that's all that really matters. You know what I mean? So niggas just gotta respect niggas' lineages, man, and what they find up in their lineage. You know, that's that should just be simple common sense. You know what I mean? Like as far as us as a collective. We as an ethnic group, as a collective, bro, we're not gonna have the same lineages, we're not gonna have the same ancestors, right? We're gonna have different stories and different things that we find in our lineage. Like I'll give you an example. Like I, I done found I, I done found um I found Cherokee in my lineage. I got I've done, I done found Choctaw in my lineage. I done found I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I done found so many tribes in my lineage, it's crazy. But then at the same time, um through marriage, right? Cause I don't, I don't like when people say you can't see at the same time. I don't like when people say you, you can't see no, um, you won't be able to find the African in your shit. If you don't find it, then you just don't find it. And that's respect too. But if you see it is there, right? So for example, like my, my fourth great, uh, grandma, my fourth great grand aunt, right? She married in the Benjamin Banneker's family. And I, I post that. Shit, I'm about to post that shit in the, in the chat right now. Like, and you, you'll be able to see, I'm gonna I'm delete it too, man, because niggas be niggas be tripping. But you you you'll be able to see like if they came from Africa, you'll be able to see like the the paperwork and the trail work for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know people just gotta respect that, bro. And people gotta respect when people saying they indigenous. You know what I'm saying? And people want to stand on their indigenous square, bro. I, honestly, I, I just don't get it. And we kind of just, it, long as there's respect there then it really shouldn't matter, man, because like Czech say, we all American, bro. You know what I'm saying? And we really need to get on that, that square and that, on that type of time and really start addressing, addressing things from that angle. You know what I'm saying? And protecting our culture, bro, because the, the culture is under attack. And we all one big ethnic group. We not the same like other ethnic groups ac across the world, bro. Our ethnic group consists of a lot of different shit. And you'll find a lot of different shit. You know what I'm saying? Whether that be European, indigenous, Af whatever you find, bro, collectively, we are ethnic group and we got different shit as an ethnic group, not you as an individual. You know what I'm saying? Like, and people just got to respect that. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, bro, that's, that's the type of time we need, we really need to be on. Uh, go ahead. Uh, hey, so, go ahead, talent, bro. And I'm going to claim, I got to close this out. I got a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, uh, if you want to ask, go ahead. Then, uh, yeah, just I, I think I feel like this would be a good space title, uh, Sonny and Booby. I'll be down to host it or be in there with you. Is is Black America an ethnic group or groups? 